Okay, can you, hopefully everybody can hear me. Can you guys hear me? In the chat. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, look like we are live. All right, so welcome you guys to CBS Soap Dish Recap, where it's going to be Trish, Keisha, and myself. We're going to be recapping both the Young and the Restless and the Bold and the Beautiful for the week of August the 21st through the 25th. Oh, my goodness. Flying by. Would you say it's, oh, my God. Can you believe it's almost September? I cannot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it's like we was just talking about um, back in December with, you know, Christmas and everything coming up, and we had that whole thing where Taylor and Brooke was doing their pact right before Christmas and all of that, girl. Right. Oh. Just yesterday. So I'm, long, but not, but not so much. Right. I mean, time is flying. Flying, flying, flying. Hey, Bree, thank you for telling everybody to hit that like button. Hello. Oh, hi, ID. It's her first time here. Welcome, Irene. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my God, Jenna, you are absolutely correct. What a week. Yeah, there was some craziness in the air this week. I know. I mean, both shows was pretty, uh, it was a lot of moving parts to me on The Young and the Restless with this whole thing with Newman Media, SNA, Victor, Adam, it's just a lot of different things. I think that was the biggest storyline on The Young and the Restless outside of baby Aria and her hearing loss situation. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, we did have a little bit of Tuck, Tucker and Ashley and all of that, but it was basically about the Newmans. Yeah, it was a little crazy. It was a lot of crazy, girl. <laughs> All right, so um, Keisha will pop in shortly, but I'm going to go ahead and, you know, um, pretty much give you a rundown if you're new here. Thank you. Welcome. I know that a lot of new folks have been coming over um, and watching the recaps and the spoilers and everything. So welcome, you guys, to the live chat. Um, also, you know what? I got to give credence to my podcast side because they have been coming faithfully for the last four years, every time I post a podcast on Spotify, they come over and they listen to us. And they're all over the globe. So thank you guys for, uh, you know, supporting the podcast. I, I, I want to make sure I give you guys your credit. And especially, you know, because I'm always talking to my YouTube folks. So I want to make sure I give you guys some credit too on the podcast side. All right, so what we normally do, we do the Young and the Restless in the first half of the show. Second half of the show, we do the Bold and the Beautiful. And then we have two segments where we got the Flip the Script segment. If there's a particular scene or storyline that you wish you could change, that's where we flip the script. We also have who's taking some seats this week. Somebody got on your nerve. They were doing too much. And you need to go and tell them to go sit down somewhere. So go take a seat. Take several seats. And then we've been lately including who's our star of the week. So if there was a certain particular actor, actress on one of each of the shows for this past week, then you can say who your favorite was this week. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and jump into The Young and the Restless. I'm going to do the summary and then we're going to break it down. And you guys, make sure that you are uh, hitting that like button. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And turn on the notifications so you'll get updates every time there's a new video posted. Alright. Okay. Alright, so for the Young and the Restless, for the week of August 21st, through August, you and Heather, and it's decided that Chelsea and Connor leave General City. Nick and Adam confront Victor for screwing over Sally. Victoria forgives Nate and learns Victor wants to replace Adam with Nate. Summer and Kyle agree to a divorce. Mariah and Tessa worry about Arya. And Nick and Sally talk about having kids. 
Victor announces that he's folding SNA into Newman Media. Adam offers Billy dirt on Tucker. And Tucker urges Ashley to drop the fight. And let me see. Okay. And then finally, Sharon and Nick is fuming at Adam's declaration. Nikki thinks Audra and Nate needs a leash. And Aria's pediatrician have bad news. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and start with the baby situation. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I knew this storyline was coming up. I figure, you know, because Young and the Restless and the Bold and the Beautiful, they tend to do awareness storylines. So I'm thinking maybe it had something to do with that or that's where it's headed. What you think? I agree. I was thinking the same thing. And then I was thinking also that that would give them a reason to not only deal with Elena, but also Devon. Right. Because, you know, Mariah. And um, there that could possibly cause some shuffling of feelings and bringing out old emotions if if perhaps um um devon and elena get close again so that, that was kind of in the back of my mind that this story of course it's about mariah and tessa and the baby but it also could be a catalyst to shake a few things up where people have gotten a little comfortable that's true you know and i mean we haven't really seen that much of mariah and tessa Mm-mm. You know, since what? What was the last storyline they had? When oh, when they were trying to adopt, mm-hmm. and then we didn't see that much of them. And oh, okay. So Keisha says she's on a, she's gonna jump on in a minute. She's on the phone with her sister. So, cool. All right, cool. Um, so I guess of course they, you know, ended up giving her a storyline with this whole thing with baby Aria and the. You know, the temporary hearing loss. So, we'll see where it goes. I did see some of the spoilers for next week. Where it looks like she is going to consult with Devon. On, you know, because he wears a cochlear implant. Correct? I think that's what... He does, yeah. Right. So, that's going to be helpful to also include him into that storyline as well. Since he has some history... And some experience with dealing with hearing loss. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Now, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it just, just, it makes sense. Yeah, it does. Now, they gave us a weird spoiler for Elena this week. They was like, oh, you know, she's going to be moving on. And so a lot of people was thinking like, huh, is there a new man in the picture? And that was supposed to be for today's episode. So, I guess they kind of threw us a, a curveball because I didn't hear nothing about no new anything. I think maybe they just meant she was just done with the whole Nate situation and she just didn't really care anymore. Mm-hmm. But then when she saw Nate talking to Audra, she stopped and had a weird look on her face. Yeah, I'm wondering if she was just figuring, you know, trying to wonder what the conversation was about. <laughs> Maybe maybe thinking that, uh-huh, now he's done with Victoria. Is he moving on with Audra? But that whole conversation had, I mean, I don't know. It was weird. What did you think about the conversation Nate and Audra were having? Hey, you Keish. Know, Keisha. Hey. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Trish. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I just think that um, both of them are so full of themselves at this point. Um, I don't know. It's like I used to love when Nate would come on, and now he's. Just, I'm just looking at him going, man, you're just a power grubbing uh, position grabbing opportunist and and i've always thought that of audra that she's an opportunist get on the fast track Uh oh i don't know okay it was just weird it was a weird conversation very very self-serving conversation yeah what did you think about that quiche with that conversation between audra and nate today um I don't even remember what they said. Oh, my gosh. So, that's when Elena walked in because he was talking when she had came back from Victor's. And she was all excited because Victor was like, oh, you know, I like your drive and your ambition. You'll oh, ma- yeah. I'll make sure I have a place for you in some capacity. And she ran back to tell Nate and he was like, man, you always amaze me and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, I don't think you should be saying that Victoria will have your head on a platter. Right. 
What'd you think? Um, I, I still kind of felt like as much help as Audra has asked Nate for, I still feel like she is only, I mean, of course, she's only looking out for herself because that's what Audra does. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought Nate was getting frustrated with her. Am I thinking about another conversation they had? Oh, no. He was happy. He was, like, so... He was amazed by her. Because when she came back to the GCAC after talking to Victor today, and she was Mm -hmm. tooting her horn about the fact that she went to Victor and told him straight up, I want to know where I stand... He was like, oh, my God, you don't cease to amaze me. And they were looking at each other. And Elena walked in and like, what the heck is that? Yeah, I remember seeing Elena walk in. Maybe I'm thinking about the other conversation when he, after he um, found out that she went to them about the the blackmail thing. Right. Yes. He, was, he was frustrated with her after that one, right? Yeah, because that was when he told her, don't bring your issues to me again. Right. That was earlier yeah. this week, yeah. though, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah, I yeah. think that was like when Tuesday or Wednesday, I think it was. Yeah, but you yeah. know, I mean, it 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 all because we still got to deal with the Newman drama of it all. We originally started talking about Keisha before you came on the situation with Aria and her hearing loss. You know, oh, yeah. and how it looked like you know Devon is going to get involved next week, and they're going to have a conversation with him, which. You know, of course, it's probably going to be an awareness type storyline like they usually do. Mm -hmm. So, yep. Yeah. So, what did you guys think about going all the way back to Monday? That whole situation with Heather, Daniel, and Lily walking in. Um, we talked about this a little earlier this week. I felt like maybe Heather was... Having a little bit of change of heart with Daniel because of the way she stood there and waited for Lily to walk away before she went over to him to talk to him. Exactly. Not saying that she needed to have that conversation that she was having with Daniel Mm -hmm. with Lily standing right there. Because, you know, it was basically a conversation about her moving back to town and just wanting to make sure that he was comfortable with it or just wanting to know how he felt about it. I I, I, I guess she didn't owe it to Lily to have that conversation in front of her. But it still felt kind of, I don't know, kind of... Sneaky. I don't, I don't even want to use the word sneaky. Cause I, don't, I don't know if she was being sneaky, but she just she waited for her to leave before she went and said anything to Daniel at all. And I feel like if there was nothing to hide, I guess, on her part, that she would have walked up to the table and spoke to both of them and, you know, had a little conversation with both of them. And then maybe after Lily left... Because it is a one-on-one conversation that she should have with Daniel, um, considering they have a child together. You know, then have that conversation with Daniel. But it was almost like she didn't want Lily to know that she was talking to him. Right. What did you think, Trish? Yeah, I kind of saw the same thing where she was being... I mean, I do. I did think she was being sneaky, and I wondered why. Like, you have a boyfriend, or maybe you don't anymore, and we don't know yet. Um, mm-hmm. But she was obviously looking at Daniel a certain way Mm -hmm. and when she saw them together the look on her face changed and you could tell she was she she's not happy that they've grown close because you know it's going to come out that that she's not with the boyfriend anymore or there's Mm -hmm. trouble in paradise and so that's the only reason that she didn't want to even be around Lily because Lily is very intuitive and she's already read her like a book Mm mm-hmm Yeah, I mean, now there are some people in the comments saying that Lily made Heather feel uncomfortable. What do you think about that? I thought she had her conversation with me. I'm sorry. Go ahead, what'd you say? I was just trying to remember what... uh, what at what point did that happen? When they had their one-on-one conversation. Right, so when Daniel left, Lily and Heather Mm -hmm. stuck around. And she was going into this part of her conversation about how her and Daniel are like this together. And we're we're working well together. And Heather was looking like, oh, oh, uh, okay. You don't remember that part? Lily was marking her territory. Uh, Exactly. (laughs) That's exactly what she was doing. That's exactly what she was doing. She was marking her territory. 
she I was mean, she was exactly marking her territory. And I mean, we only got one day of that, so I don't know what else is supposed to be happening. But yeah. um, because the spoilers also from last week was saying not only were they going to talk about that interaction, but Lily was supposed to make a shocking move. But we didn't see a shocking move unless that was it. You know what I mean? I don't know. That was yeah. weird. The the descriptives they use are sometimes really truly misnomers. <laughs> right, it's uh, embellished. <laughs> it's definitely I, embellished. You know, some I of the kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say sometimes they're spot on and sometimes they're just really overly embellished. But go ahead. I was going to say, I kind of think Lily jumped the gun a little bit on how um, almost defensive she was being with Heather uh, or, you know, the way she was, I guess, trying to mark her territory with Daniel um, in that conversation with Heather because I don't, they didn't really do anything wrong. I mean, yeah, Daniel grabbed her hand. I guess I could see how if you walk in on that, how that might look a little you know, like, what's going on here, but before you, like, before you approach the ex, go talk to Daniel first. Right. You know what I mean? If you felt like maybe there was something, something else, something more going on there in that conversation, and you were uncomfortable with what you saw, talk to him first. Don't go to her. And, and start, you, you're you know, talking about Lily. Your chest. Lily should have yeah. said, "Yeah, I agree Lily with that." Should, Lily should have gone to Daniel. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that one. I mean, go over there and ask your dude, like, "Hey, you know, I saw y'all earlier. What's going on? What's up with that?" You know, and then, but she went over there, like you said, marking her territory, and Heather's looking like, "Okay." Even though I do, like Trish said, she probably was being a little shady because why couldn't you just come over there and have a conversation, all three of you guys? Yeah. You know, so I think it's both sides had a little bit of shade. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, so I don't know. I I wish they, I kind of would like for them to pursue that. That probably would give Daniel a little bit of something, but I don't know. What do you guys think? You think they should create a little tension between those three? I mean, I, I always like a good little love triangle. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, don't know what's going on. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. They're all three absolutely beautiful, so it's not like anything's hard to watch. Um, right. But, you know, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I just, um, I always hate it whenever they have the characters just wait that little bit too long, and now they're involved with someone else, and I know that's where the drama comes from, but it would be kind of cool if there were, you know, some some good girlfriend relationships you know like you have an actual friend on the show well the only ones that's like that is either chloe and yeah. sally or chloe and chelsea uh -huh. and lauren and phyllis right mm -hmm. yeah. yep that's i mean so there's a few Jenna on there. Is saying that go ahead go ahead i was Keisha. just gonna say jenna um and can you guys hear me yes I was just going to say, Jenna in the comments is saying that Heather and Daniel are not divorced. They're not? No, I thought they're, they're not. They're not yet, are they? Oh. They were, they were going I thought through. they were. I thought they were too, I, but I they're guess, separated. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I forgot so about either, that. I guess, in, in my opinion, either way it goes, whether they're divorced or separated or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever they're doing. Heather had a boyfriend. That's yes, true. They moved, yeah. Heather moved away from, from Daniel. So, I mean, she really, uh, I don't think their their technical marriage means much right now to either one of them if she exactly. moved on with another man. Well, ask Brooke that question when it comes to hope. <laughs> 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 oh, my gosh. Oh, I can't wait to hit that one. Oh, good grief. <laughs> When it comes to Brooke and Hope and, and her marriage with Liam, huh, she don't care. Get your husband back. I don't care if you did sleep with Thomas ten times. Uh -huh. Shut up, Lord. Yes, Lord. Girl, <laughs> tell me about it. That woman. <laughs> yep. it, it, there's, like, there's nothing like her in either one of these soaps. Mm -hmm. you know, it, like, she's just 
she is by far the worst mother I feel like <laughs> and I don't even watch any of the other soaps on the other um, networks but uh, I believe she's probably the worst mother <laughs> that's out there she um, does some extraordinarily questionable things and gives some pretty terrible advice she does yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bree has a question. She says, "So does that mean that Daniel will be with Heather once Lily is on? Well, okay, what's her name? Christelle Khalil is on maternity leave. I smell a cheating scandal in the works." Oh, I mean, I don't that's want possible. To be wrong, but it is possible. It's possible because I think she's due at the end of the year. Her and um, Cameron Grimes. Cameron, oh, wow. yeah, both of them are pregnant. Yeah. So I mean, it could mean that hey, if she goes off on maternity leave, maybe go hang out with the kids in New York or wherever they are, you know, for her to go have the baby. That leaves Daniel and Heather because Heather's sticking around for a little bit. So I don't know. Yeah. It's but possible. I, I'm hoping the um, the spoiling event you. You told me about earlier this week of Heather and Adam getting together. Girl, I saw that. And I was like, ooh, that would be great. long time. That'd be full circle. Mm -hmm. That would be full circle. I honestly would be open to that. As much as I want Adam to kind of see if they can put him in the same orbit as Audra, I wouldn't Mm -hmm. mind seeing Heather circle back around to Adam, too. Yeah. I just want him away from Sally right now. Same. Oh, girl. That girl get on my nerves, man. Oh, man. She get on my nerves. Oh, man. I, I got to tell you. So, we didn't, I wasn't available last week but I um, on Sunday. But it was like what Victor did to her, that was just you ruin her job that she had. And then you take away the job offer and you literally leave the woman who just lost your grandchild in the wind. I was yeah, so... I, thought, I agree. I thought that was trash of him. And trash. The only thing is, though, about that is two people tried to tell her. Adam tried to tell her before. And I think even Nicholas hinted about it, too. Like, ah, it's your choice, but I don't think so. And Chloe definitely said no. Yeah. So, I mean, granted, that was horrible what Victor did, but people tried to tell her, look, don't do it, Victor can't be, and she said no. She's seen what close front and center, what this man does to his own children. It's going to be even worse next week, because I don't know if y'all seen the spoilers, but to, uh, none of them ain't going to be running anything. <laughs> And that's what Sharon gets for being so stupid enough to give her company to Newman. Why would you do that? I understand she might have need maybe a powerhouse of money or something. But Adam got money. She should have talked him into buying it. That whole thing is just crazy. Now here come Victor. Want to. Oh God. We got to get into that storyline. Before I go off on a tangent. But um, but there's this other part of the storyline with Billy. So, Billy, did it seem to you that when Tucker and Ashley said, "Ah, eh, we're done," Jack was like, "Oh, okay, we're done." And Billy was like, "No, no, 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 don't wait. Y'all ain't done. <laughs> we're not done yet, man. I need that job." <laughs> right. So I, Go ahead. So that I'm. I told you I was confused about that whole thing. I went back and watched a couple of the episodes from this week. Mm -hmm. Um, And I saw where Jack said to Billy. uh, So basically Jack is having Billy still poke around because he wants to see if um, uh, Ashley accepting that offer that he gave her, that wedding gift. He Mm -hmm. wants to see if that's real or if they're if they're still trying to play him. So that's why he went back to Tucker and was still trying to do all that poking around. But it's like, at what point does it end? Exactly. You know what I mean? Well, it probably going like, to end on a piece of fruit next week. <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I almost choked. Right, exactly. <laughs> So I do, I do wonder though, is this going to evolve into Billy now, like 
realizing that he wants more than Mm -hmm. what he has right now. And if it's, if what Jack and Diane did, like putting Billy up to this little scheme, excuse me, excuse me, um, is going to backfire on them. And Billy is for real, like not going to be with a Diane being in an exec role because he's worried about Jack promoting her over everybody else and, you know, having her run the company side by side with him. That's what I think is going to happen. I think that's going to backfire on Jack. My question was, though, why was Victoria so concerned about that when she had that right. confrontation with Ashley? I don't know. She was getting on my nerves, though. And I wish Ashley would have told her to shut up and go away. Yes. It's like, I did not invite you to sit down with me. I did not ask your opinion. And you just inserted yourself into all aspects of my life. And I don't even like you. Right. Yeah, she was being very condescending, like, the the sarcasm was just she just super snarky like Mm -hmm. when she said something about um something about them getting married and Ashley you know said how happy she was and Victoria was like "Mm, I don't know if I would say that or I don't know about that it's like you don't know go away (laughs) exactly miserable because you can't have a, a successful love life don't come over here trying to rain on my parade she never has Exactly. She started probing and then Ashley was like, well, why do you care? You know, I mean, he's your ex, you know, he's having a a life with Chelsea. And she was like, well, he's still my kid's father. Okay. But and then wondering if Ashley is trying to use him to take down Jabot, which technically was true. But it's like, Jack is really the one using him. Yep. Yeah. Well, remember they tried to flip it on the opposite side too, with Ashley and Tucker prepositioning Billy as well. Remember? Yeah. 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 So you know, I mean, part of that is true, but I don't know if they're doing that now because Tucker wants out of this mess. I honestly believe yeah. he wants out. Yep. Yeah, he does clearly. Because when, as soon as he thought that they were done, did you hear him getting loud and stuff up in there? Yep. Talking to Ashley, he was flush. He was frustrated. Like, why we keep going back to this? And she was like, "Oh, this is my company's fam, my family's company, and my father's legacy." What'd you say, uh, Trish? I can't let her win. Right, and like, win what? what? (laughs) My thing is, the girl already signed a post nup. They thinking that she's just gonna walk away with. What the, the 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 company and the kitchen sinks too? It's like it's not even how that works. I mean, you don't just get married to someone and all of a sudden you're just instantaneously in time with half of everything they have. Girl, and my thing is, haven't you learned from Phyllis? That girl almost ruined her life trying to do take down Diane, and Jack still married her. Right. Yep. Let it go. It probably just kicked it up a notch even more. Just you know the way that they. They keep trying to go after Diane. Mm-hmm. I don't think him and Diane would be re- married right now if um, if Ashley, you know, wasn't going through all of this BS trying to get rid of Diane. You know what? That's a good point, Keisha, because they really pushed this wedding faster because mm-hmm. of Ashley and Tucker. And then, of course, Ashley and Tucker pushed their wedding to do what they wanted to do. Both of them, all four of them are married because they were playing games with each other. Yeah. Who actually just kept digging their heels in. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep, so, okay. Well, we definitely now have to dive into this whole thing. Oh, we got another piece of Abbott drama, that divorce with Kyle and Summer. Nicholas and that conversation he had with Kyle, I had I had to say this, and I think I said this to Jay Money, and I might have sent you the same message, Keisha. The same conversation that Kyle was having with Nicholas, telling him to save his marriage, is the same conversation Hope should have had with Brooke. <laughs> Remember. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because he was sitting up there like, oh, you can forgive her. She made a mistake. Don't do it. And uh, he was like, uh, you didn't accept be- betrayal, so why do I have to accept betrayal? Right. Nick couldn't the only say thing nothing. I didn't like in that, Go ahead. In that conversation um, is when Kyle said something about, 
I should have known better. She, I can't remember if he used the word manipulated or mm-hmm. um, she it's something that she did when it came to. Oh, it was the she the, blackmailed uh, against Mary and him. Blackmailed. He did her organ. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like Kyle. Stop it. <laughs> right. Exactly. I'll let you push her away. I mean, he ain't no angel here either. I mean, the moment he yeah. walked straight out the door into Audra's bed. Well, not only right. that, I mean, we're talking about a guy who literally impregnated another woman who was married to a man in that man and woman's own house, like in their house. He finally got together. He uh-huh. chased Summer over to Europe. Like, you went after her. Summer was done. Yep. yep. You went after her. Did nobody hold a gun in your head to try to get you guys together? Um, Summer wasn't in your face every day, you know, nope. trying to fix whatever you guys had. She left. Yep. So, for him to sit there and, and act as if Summer was the one begging him for a chance when it was the opposite, like, everybody else we forget. Like, we don't forget. We remember. Yeah, that like, whole thing with her. What, what's that girl name? Harrison's mother? Tara. Tara. That whole thing was a hot mess. How you gonna bring... Well, first of all, he was a side dude. He was disrespectful for being in there. But she brought the man up in the house. It's like, girl, both of (laughs) y'all... Both of y'all crazy. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And then you kept... You knew that baby wasn't wasn't, uh, Ashlyn Locke's kid. And you kept that a secret from both of them. Because Kyle didn't know. And then he didn't know. He thought that baby was, was his. But... It's a whole mess because Kyle indulged himself in that situation too. And then when Summer was like, I'm done, he going to beg for her to come back. Now, do I like what Summer did in regards to her mama? Mm, no. But uh, y'all pretty much even. <laughs> so. Exactly. I am proud of Summer, though, for going, going to him and saying, we just we need to get this over with. Yeah. Because that's what it was. There's no repairing this. I'm glad that she didn't try to beg Kyle again to forgive her. Um, and I'm glad that she was the one that went to him and was like, we, we just need to, we need to get on with this. You know what? I, for the life of me, I don't understand why Kyle, who, like you said, the minute him and Summer separated, he went and jumped in the bed with Audra. Mm-hmm. Why have you not done anything to pursue a divorce yet? That's a good question. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, exactly. Because they won't do the work. You know, I mean, she's like, look, let's just get this over with. Now, from what I understand, I don't know if it's the week of the 28th or the week of the 4th, but Phyllis is going to play matchmaker. So, and I think Phyllis it's... Phyllis needs to sit down somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing she needs to do is try to play matchmaker for her because yeah. she's the reason why they broke up. You know, I don't know if that means matchmaker as in trying to get Kyle fixed that situation or maybe somebody else. I wish they would have just went ahead and put Chance with her. I, w- I wanted to see that kind of play out. I'm not feeling the whole Sharon and Chance thing. I feel like either way it goes, if whether it's her trying to get Kyle to forgive her, uh, to forgive Summer, or mm-hmm. if it's her trying to hook Summer up with somebody else. Like, the girl is going through a divorce right now I, I feel like the last thing you need to be doing is hooking her up with a new man like give her some time yeah that's well a whole, yeah that's a whole nother layer of another human being's problems because you know you get not just the fun times when you go in the relationship you get the problems too why would you want it to i don't know i couldn't imagine taking on a whole nother person's problems in the midst of all the problems well i mean and i get that the thing is the soaps are so fast moving so you'll find, except for somebody like Thomas who haven't had a relationship for twelve years or whatever, <laughs> he's probably the only person that haven't moved and found somebody quick as anybody on either one of these shows. <laughs> so, yeah, because yeah. Audra slid right from up under Noah to Tucker to to uh, Kyle. You know, Nate went from Amanda to Elena to victoria i mean the list just goes on and on it does you know and let's not talk about adam nick and sally oh my god that ping pong game 
it's just uh she always playing two in the middle and that's this is just i wish adam would just leave her alone and if nick if she want to be with nicholas just just go ahead and let that girl be with nick stop showing up at that man house anyway yeah, she's a, what'd you say she she just with that whole thing where she went over to adam's because adam offered her that job and didn't mention a word about that to nick thank you like, Mm-hmm. Why would you not, knowing that Nick is part of that company? Yep. You would think that you would say something to him about that. Yeah. Like, what would be the point in you keeping it from him until you knew for sure what you were going to do? Like, why? <laughs> right. And, and she mm-hmm. knew that he that that Adam hadn't talked to him because they told her that he hadn't talked to him. So she she already knew it was like not done properly. I thought that was shady on her part. I it too. it, it was really shady. was. That was shady. And it was, it was. There was no need for her to keep that from him. Uh uh-uh. And too, talking to Adam could have been a phone call. Right. Yep. She. Why did you have to come over there? That's the second time she didn't came over there. When Nick then called her over there, when yep. he was out of town last week, and then she was over there looking through his stuff, ordering food and all that stuff, and Nicholas showed over there. He wanted to blame that on Adam. Oh, he manipulated you to come over there. <laughs> you know and then this week she did what she did what you was just talking about Keisha and it's like Nicholas at what point do you see that maybe you need to remove yourself from this situation too right but and they also to go on to send her back to LA that's what I said in my uh spoiler thing I'm like send her back to LA Liam might be free <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She was a. Uh, she did have a little crush on Liam, didn't she? Girl, please. A whole building fell on top of them when they was under the rock <laughs> kissing each other. Right. Uh. <laughs> he ran up in a building to get with Sally, and Bill blew that building up. They were under concrete. Steffi was pissed. She was so mad she went and slept with Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, oh, man. girl, listen, so it's like, uh, at what point, Sally, I mean, brothers, Newman brothers, are you going to see the, mm, what y'all going to do with Sally? Or else somebody, just, just leave her alone. However, next week, oh, before we even, before I even go there, did you hear them talk about having kids? Yes. What did you think about that, Trish? Please don't. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, it's like, um, you know, he's he's got a daughter her age, or a little younger, I guess. Summer would be would be a little bit younger than Sally. Um, uh, I mean, your daughter has a four or five year old. Like, please, please don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess maybe as the youngest of ten, I feel very strongly about <laughs> having kids at an old age. There's a lot of <laughs> out on. <laughs> There's a lot of things that. You know, you just it's just different. Well, they're going to be sexing each other on Monday. So I'm like, dang, are y'all trying for it already? Oh, man. I feel like they stay in the bed. They do. Mm-hmm. You would think she would be pregnant by now, by him. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, okay. So y'all ready to hit this Newman stuff? Because here's my thing with... Okay, so there's what's the first moving part to this? The first moving part is the blackmail thing happened last week, right? And that came out. He met with them, meaning Victor. Victor met with them on was that Wednesday? Uh, or was that yesterday? I thought it was yeah, man. I thought it was early yesterday. I don't remember, y'all. I'm sorry. Okay, so I feel like he met with them a couple times. This right. Time. Right, he did. But did you guys notice, as usual, it's always Adam and Victor having the business conversation. They sitting on the couch looking stupid. And they looking from left to right at, at Victor and left to right like two bobbleheads looking at Adam. And it's like... I call them two bumps on a log. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and you wonder why Adam want to run the company. Because you don't, they really don't know. They don't know the difference between a, mer- a merger and a company being absorbed, like a takeover. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you don't get a say. Exactly. You know, you're, and you're lucky you still have any stock left in this game at all. Yeah, and then you include Nate in this. What did you think about the conversation between Nate and Victor? I can't stand Nate. I loved Nate. Y'all know that. I listened to that, and his... It wasn't that he just had a professional opinion about the business plan. He basically called Nick as an oaf. Sharon can't do anything, may as well go back and run a coffee house, and Adam's a ticking time bomb. But Nate is evidently like the scale of all justice and great decision and great opinion. Are you kidding me? This is a guy who literally was going to break his own family. Mm-hmm. I'm so disappointed. Yeah, I was, was kind of... I was a little surprised that he was kind of going after Adam the way he was. Like, who, I know who are you that, talking uh, about, Nate? No. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, like, it's not a secret that Adam and um, Victor have a contentious relationship, but I don't know. I just felt like he didn't really hold back with his opinion of Adam to his own father. Mm. And... I'm still trying to understand what Nate thinks he's going to gain out of all this because he's already been told multiple times you're only going to make it so far in this company because you're not a new man. But it's like he, the way he tries to kiss Nick, Nikki and Victor's you know what, is it just, I don't know, it's just I very sick. Rubbing me the wrong way. Yeah, and I mean, he was the one that was the turning point this week to make a decision because he told Nate to go through the business plan of SNA Media to see what he thought about it and came back and gave a whole thing, but he also tried to throw Adam under the bus in the meantime. Then he gets into a whole argument over society with Adam, and I'm like, y'all throwing mud at each other and y'all both muddy yourselves. You know, I'm Nate sitting up there throwing out all these crazy accusations to Adam. I'm like, dude, you just tried, you threw your father, I mean, your family's business under the bus. How are you going to sit up there and call Adam shady when you shady too? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I, that, that whole thing with, with Nate right now is just really getting on my nerves. Yeah, um, it is. And then the crazy thing about this is that Victor went and had a whole circus show. Circus, smoke show, whatever you want to call it. And Adam has been trying to merge those companies for weeks. Because remember Trish, before last time you were on, we were saying that it was a lot of redundancies. Remember? Because why would you have two separate media companies under the same corporation? It doesn't make sense. And that's what Adam was like, look, why won't we just merge the companies and we run it? He's like, no, 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 and we don't want you to have anything to do with it. And then Victor turn around and, and, and consume it, absorb it anyway. So. Yeah, uh, it, it's, uh, it's almost like Victor and Adam are exactly the same person. They're just years apart. Yep. Um, it has to be their idea. It has to be, like, it can't be, no one else can get the credit. Um, I don't know. Just the whole thing, just really, I, I'm just quite frankly sick of it. I thought there were so many different ways they could have done that storyline, and it would have it would have actually made more realistic sense. Um, having a mogul like Victor play this kind of petty is... Um, it's comical. I mean, what? it's just comical. Uh, Adam obviously went to Harvard. He's obviously, high, obviously a highly intelligent individual. He's, he's your son. It was his idea. It was his company to start with. I mean, did he blackmail what's-her-face? Yeah. I mean, should he have? No. Do I care? No. Um, but, I mean, come on, man. Let's, let's be realistic about this. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in assets. Mm -hmm. but again this is where I get frustrated with Adam because I mean obviously he's hell bent on getting Newman Media back because it was that was his baby yep. but it's like when are you going to learn that anything that Victor owns you are not getting 
you will never own it. He is mm-hmm. never going to sell that to you because Victor does not like to give up control of anything. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand why Adam cannot get that through his head. Yeah. Like, every time. When do you think this is going to change? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, well, listen, girl, we've been saying that's for the last four years since we've been doing this podcast that he has to have a company of his own. Stop going up under Victor. He's the definition of insanity. He keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. Never going to happen. It's not going to happen when it comes to Victor Newman. And it was, that's why when, when Sharon, and I, I know we said this a little bit ago, but Sharon, why would you want to put your company in Newman's hands? Mm-hmm. I mean, you want to do good by the company. You want to do right by the company. And then now she's going to try to remove herself out of the deal next week. Do you think Victor going to let you out of that? Mm-hmm. No. I mean, and these these are people that have known Victor for years. I mean, Sharon has been around that family for what? About two, three decades now? Mm-hmm. She should know how Victor operates. That was not a smart move, you know, for her to put that company under the Newman. I think she would have stood a better chance by putting it under Jabot. <laughs> a chancellor. <laughs> You know, she could have, what has she got, a tech company? She could have put that under yeah. Chancellor Winters. Yeah. They got a music division over there. They have a media division over there. Because that's what Chancellor Winters is. Music and media. You, Devon would have been like, sure, come on, bring that tech piece over here. We'll, we'll help you. She would have been safer over there. And it would have brought um, Chancellor winters back into the fold because i feel like ever since that whole thing with um audra and nate blew up Mm -hmm. we haven't really seen much on their side of things when it comes to business right and that's the first time that we would actually get a chance to see sharon and lily work together you know or sharon working over there with devon we never really get to see sharon in those spaces with them yeah so they really, I think that would have been a missed opportunity, but they had to throw it under this whole circus over here. I don't even know why Victor would have thought that these three could work together, especially Adam and Nicholas. Right. I don't know why Adam and Nicholas thought they could work together. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, I still go back to the whole, you know, Adam saving Faith all those times and everything. I'm like, come on, man. Give him some, cut him some slack. And then, and then stop, um, you know, Nick cut Adam some slack, and then Adam stopped screwing up and doing the same thing over and over again. <clears throat> yeah. Some I'm looking Jay at Money a couple. Said, oh, go ahead. Oh, Jay Money said, "What's this rumor about Nikki taking charge? Is she going to be the CEO?" Yes, that is charge? correct. So it's not a rumor. It's come. It's um. Let me see if I can send over. If I, I think I still have it. So um, it's not a rumor. It's actually Victor can't trust anybody. So he's going to put her in charge of Newman Media. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Say that again. Just in charge of Newman Media? Yeah. Because they're going to. Nikki. Nikki. For crying out. <laughs> so Not in right. charge of Newman. Just Newman, Newman Media. Media. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. I, but I, okay. Let me just do it. Bow, 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 bow. What? What are you doing over there? <laughs> I was doing the music. Girl, you're so Jackson. funny. Nikki, check sound. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Let me see. So then that kicks um, everybody. Nate, out yeah, of that. Correct, Nate because that's Nate. that's another spoiler that he's going to be fighting for his job next week, too. Oh, wait. Is Nate... Nate is, a Nate is a COO. So the COO of Newman right now, right? Yeah, but would that mean they moved him out of Newman Media and they bumped up Audra to cover that position while Nate was temporarily filling in the COO spot? Mm-hmm. Here it is, right here. It says Nikki takes charge. Victor announces that Nikki will announces that Nikki will be the sole CEO of Newman Media. There is no one that Victor trusts more than Nikki, according to Griff, um, whatever that producer's name is. Josh Griffith. 
Yep. Yep. So it's not a rumor. I just don't understand all these. Uh, there's so many moving parts to this. Exactly. Home. That's what I was it's, saying. It's too much. <laughs> like, there's Newman, there's Newman Media, now there's SNA, now they're merging companies, mm-hmm. kicking people out of different positions. Like, I'm so confused. And then when, when Nate said to Victoria, because Nate, I think Nate, after that conversation with Victor, seems as if he thinks Victor is about to offer him some big. Uh, position yeah was it was it the CEO was it putting him back at Newman Media or something because he said something like or Victoria said something like um oh no he said to Victoria would you try to block him to keep me here if he does that and I can't remember what position he thinks he's gonna get because he he had already been CEO of Newman Media so (laughs) Where else could he go that he thinks is going to be higher than what he previously had? Exactly. I, so I, I was confused about about that. Um, Unless well, he is... Are you talking um, about the conversation he had with Victoria this week? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was that yesterday? Yeah. Um, yes, that was yesterday. And then he going to come up in there with a rose or something. Trying yeah. to go home with her. And she was like, nope. <laughs> but yeah because after he met with Victor he came up to Victoria and so Victoria pieced it together saying that you know he's gonna mur- uh oh we lost Keish she'll be oh, back no. um she you know he came back uh to Newman and told Victoria that um I talked to your pops and he's thinking about this and that and he asked me what my vision was and all of this and <laughs> And oh, then yeah. she pieced it together saying, um, he's merging the companies and he, I'm wondering if he's, and he said, I wonder if he's going to have me run it. She knocked him down a couple of pegs and pretty much said, uh, stop smelling yourself. Who, what makes you think that my dad is going to give you Newman Media? I was so glad she did that. It's like, this guy, <laughs> he is so full of himself now. I mean, I'm sorry, but I really think they've ruined the character of Nate. I used to just love when Nate would come on, and now every time he opens his mouth, he's a know-it-all, bloviating jerk. Mm, yeah, they really changed his character. There she is. What happened, girl? Hey. Keish. Is she hey. there? What Hi. happened, girl? You got cut off? My so Somebody called me, and as soon as somebody calls it, it, it knocks you off. off. Oh, I thought okay. I put it on do not, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I thought I had gotcha, it on gotcha. do not disturb, but I didn't. Did you hear us talking about that conversation in the office that uh, Nate and Victoria had when he thought that he was going to be the one running Newman Media and Victoria knocked him down a couple of pegs and said, stop smelling yourself? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of cut off in the middle of that. Yeah, that's what we was just talking about when you popped out. That was so funny. That was hilarious. It, so that's why I'm confused at because he ha- he has already held that position, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I think he thinks he would be CEO of the new merch. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he we'll thought that he was get dead. A promotion from CEO. Right, because that's going to be be a big, huge media empire. You you actually have three companies now, one. You know what I'm saying? That's going to be huge. And so his head swole up so big thinking that Victor is going to slide him over there. And Victoria like, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. But but go ahead, uh, Keish. I guess that was the confusion I was trying to, that was the thing I was trying to understand was it's not like you weren't CEO before. So Mm -hmm. So then was it a, a demotion to put him up to like the parent company and make him CEO. Well, I mean, it's a division when he's the CEO of the actual main ship, the mothership, that's bigger. CEO of the mothership is bigger than the CEO of the satellite office per se, or a division. A division unit or a business. And that's what, so that's what I thought. So why did he seem so excited about possibly being put back? Because that company was going to be the, because that it's not the same. It's bigger. Yeah. 
And not uh, only will it be the media platforms, but it's also the hosting companies because of the Kirsten company. Because right. Because that company was actually the ones that where you, you know, log on through and host websites on, not just the actual content. And right now, all they have is really, you know, the platforms. Um, so with that, they have not only the platforms, but they have the what supports the platforms. Right. So for, money. so for Nate, it would be more power. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that's what he was hoping yes. for. That's it's con it's right. kind of like taking, um, having being a CEO of another Newman per se because it's so huge now, and that's why Adam wants it so bad. Adam not only wants okay. the Newman Media, but he wants the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> he does. Yeah, he does. Uh and as we saw, why he thinks he's gonna even get that far is oh, me. girl, they're gonna be sadly disappointed when they come to find out he make that announcement about Nikki next week. Mm-hmm. And then what you think they're gonna do? They're gonna blame it on Adam. This is your fault. If you didn't do what you did, Dad would have trusted us. No, he wouldn't. Have. Right. Victor was going to do what he was going to do. Because remember, he originally gave him six months. And then he said, no, I'm giving you three months. And then did today or yesterday, Adam was like, well, I thought you were giving us three months. Nope, I ain't giving you three. <laughs> Changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't work with a person like that. I'm sorry. I, I just, it's, no. it's, I, there's no way I could work with a person. It's unstable. It's unpredictable. Yeah. And insane. That would be an insane work environment. And there would never, nothing would ever get done. It would just be chaos all the time. It, uh, right. And for Audra to actually think. Now, I mean, it looked like he wants to mentor her and guide her. And I'm looking, Nikki, I'm like, with Nikki, like, what you doing that for? Right. <laughs> uh-huh. I don't blame Nikki. Nikki was like, shoot, them two need to be on a leash. I mean, okay. It's funny how nobody knows about um, Kyle and Audra because when Kyle was in Victoria's office talking to her, she has no clue that that her and Kyle are hooking up. And it's like it's not like they've really been hiding it because they've been out in public with each other, like all up in each other's faces. He told Summer, you know what was going on, but I don't think um, I don't think anybody over at Newman realizes that they're actually. Um, I don't even, I don't know if you would call this a relationship, but a situation whatever it is that they're doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My thing is, if if Audra is moving somewhere else, what does that mean for Kyle? I would, I guess, Victor would give him some sort of a position. Uh, I don't know. I'm curious about that too. I you mean, know. right now, Kyle is so um, annoying. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, look, let me just sum it up for you. He's just well, annoying. Just, give me a minute. I'll tell you how I really feel. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is, but like up to the point where he is, he's, he, he is well within his rights to be as pissed off as Summer as he was. But there is something about when he jumped in bed with Audra, it just. Yep. It just really annoyed me. I don't I don't know if it was because it was Audra or if it was because he was just so blatantly like Yeah, I'm I'm screwing her now. Forget you summer. Like the way he kinda said it to her. I I don't know. I don't know why that bothered me so much, but it I'm did right and with you. I just want to punch him in the face. Oh, no. You're so oh, funny. Yeah. yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah, I mean, because it's almost as if, like, if if you could jump into bed with her that easy, then what did we clearly? Really yeah, that that marriage oh, and oh. your relationship with her didn't really mean all that much to you, regardless of how pissed off you are at somebody. Like going that far with intimacy with a brand new person, like literally. Hours after you separate from your your wife that you've been in love with for since they were kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's crazy. And the thing is, you know, this is not going to end well for him. Nope. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Audra is all about Audra. 
If Audra is ruthless. <laughs> yes, she is, which is why. Because uh, remember, Tucker sent her a message because we also had that interaction. I forgot about that before we left the Abbots and Billy. That interaction between Adam, Tucker, and Billy, where Adam tried to give Billy some tea on Tucker. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, Tucker sent that message over to Audra like he needed to be dealt with. And then when they were talking about Adam, she was like, I'm like, she got some type of plan. I'm like, don't get caught up. You're going to end up in bed with him. I'm okay with that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't understand why that 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 whole thing with the with Tucker, um, and the cover up mm -hmm. is still a big deal. Like he he's come clean to um, Ashley. Ashley knows about it. Like what else is it gonna hurt? He doesn't have that company anymore. The only thing that it could hurt is their new company. That's simply Ashley Company. If he's affiliated with it. But if Adam is the one to leak the secret, it's going to hurt Newman more. Because of the backlash, because they own McCall. It happened on, under the McCall umbrella. Now they own it. So that's why Victor was like, don't bring the secret out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt us when you're talking about trying to bla blackmail somebody. <laughs> you know, so... Oh, yeah, because remember, it's three pieces to that. It's McCall, Kirsten, and that's it. McCall and Kirsten, right? I thought it was three pieces yeah, to that. Yeah, I keep forgetting about McCall. Yeah, it's McCall yeah, it's, and Kirsten. It's just those two. Right, it's just yeah. those two. So, all I know is I, I, I want Adam to have his own thing. Get him a girlfriend so he can make Sally jealous. <laughs> <laughs> what you laughing at, Trish? <laughs> because you're not cracking me up over here. You, okay, you can't tell me that Sally keep popping up over at Adam's house unannounced just no. because. Shoot! Oh, I didn't tell you my new nickname for Sally is Pop Tart. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, she didn't pop it up at that man's house twice. First with a so-called housewarming guest uh, gift when nicholas was out of town and then you pop up out of the blue without telling nicholas and telling adam that you were coming over about the job offer she want, for some reason she can't keep away from that man and she know a part of her still got feelings for him but she keep denying it because i think nicholas is the bigger fish in the whole situation and he's a simp <laughs> they both are i know he's simping too <laughs> but I'm telling you, I think Nicholas is a bigger simp than Adam is, though. What you think, Keish? I I don't know the way Adam keeps trying it with Sally. It's just pathetic it, to me. Makes him look pathetic. It makes him look pathetic. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's I agree with you on that one. I He's agree got, with you on that one. They've got plenty of choices out there for Adam to just to get him off of this Sally train. And they're just, for whatever reason, not choosing to, to put him with anybody. So my guess is that at some point, they are going to put Adam and Sally back together. And I'm over it. Well, did y'all see what he what they did? Sally get on my nerve, too. She put him on blast about the job offer. You wait to tell Nicholas about the job offer in front of everybody. And then when, before she left, they kissing each other in front of Adam. I'm like, come on, y'all. Which is exactly why Adam just needs to let her go. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, they are literally, it's, it's in your face. Well, I, I don't know if I would say you're rubbing it in his face, but, I mean, you're kind of rubbing it in his face. Because you, know you know he still feels the way he feels about Sally. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you still have to live your life, and and too, it's like, how do you let someone go when they're not yours? Like she's not his. It's like in his mind, he thinks that he has some hold on her, and I don't know. I mean, maybe in her mind, she's trying to show him, no, you don't. Look, I'm showing you. You literally don't. Or maybe she just doesn't even know what she's. Well, she knows exactly what she's doing, but y'all know what I mean. It's like, let it all go. Yeah, I mean, Nicholas, I mean, I, they need to move Adam away from that whole thing. I, I just, I'm over it. 
I, I tried to hang in there all of 2022, hoping they got back together when they had sex with each other back in December, which is where she got pregnant from. And that was a travesty scene. That was not good. No, it was awkward. And they it was I was like, no, they didn't. And then she told me, eh, yeah, we need to break up because the sex was bad. Really? I just need to try one more time just to make sure this should keep us together. Oh, well, mm, yeah, nah. Right. I give it a five. That okay. was such an awkward, like cringy scene. It was. It was. Girl, and the thing is, it was hard because he was trying to, like, you know, get into it, and she was like, "Hey, I, I don't want it." Uh, uh. And I'm like, "What is going?" Because everybody was excited about that. They was as as excited about Adam and Sally sleeping together as they was about Hope and Thomas back in December. And yeah. so, I mean, it, it was all over the spoilers. Adam and Sally is going to be together again and they're going to be sleeping together. And it was the worst thing ever. Worst ever. Yep. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, another thing that happened this week. Thanks, LaShanta. Connor leaving. So we all know that part of the reason for him leaving was to get Melissa Claire Egan on maternity leave. Yeah. So, and she, that baby probably by now, she probably might be on almost time to come back. I don't know how long she's taken for maternity leave. But I think she had that baby in June, early July, I think it was. Or was it? seeing photos posted online yeah because she had the baby early i remember them saying that that it was a couple weeks early so and i think she had to have a c-section too mm. so yeah so she had the baby baby got to be like a month old now so it's probably should be back pretty soon and i'm wondering is connor coming back though because they made it look like he's going away to be you know he chose the school for kids with anxiety I thought that was a pretty cool storyline. You know, he's like, look, y'all driving me crazy. I need to go get exactly. some help. You know. Exactly. And like Sharon said, he was being self-aware. He's saying, I need help. And I don't blame him because that Newman family is out of control. Totally <clears throat> out of control. Out of control. Um, oh, and then now... <clears throat> Excuse me, did y'all see the conversation between Sharon and Nicholas about kicking Adam to the curb? Yeah. And I'm like, hmm, we're not business savvy. So let's kick the Harvard business uh, grad out. Yep. I'm like, yeah, y'all go ahead and do that by yourself. Go ahead and see how it work out. What you think, Keish? Um, I, I, I feel like we probably could have predicted this. Mm -hmm. I, I think when they first started talking about working together, we all pretty much said this is it's not going to last long. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Simply because Adam and Nick just can't, they don't get along with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This was a disaster from the start. Exactly. Yeah. What I am surprised about, though, is how um, Sharon has responded to, to Adam, like the, the way that she's pretty much been going in on him. They knew like who I get he was. Her frustration, too. but mm -hmm. I, f I felt like I felt like Sharon would have been like the neutral party that would try to like get both men to see um, reason. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't expect her to just Sharon. jump on the the side of you know us against Adam. So I think the old Sharon would have been probably more pragmatic about it, but after what happened with Faith, she's the no BS Sharon. She's mm -hmm. changed. They changed her character since all that happened. You talking about I mean, the Kirsten thing, huh? Yeah. After the Kirsten thing, yeah. yeah. The expressions that she has, the way that she comes up to, you know, the way she basically assaulted Phyllis at the table when they were talking about the job and everything. I mean, mm -hmm. she didn't do that before. It was always very. Um, very soft and not you know she's she's become kind of in your face they've done in a they've done changes to that character yeah a little bit 
Ay, ay, ay. I mean, I guess Maybe she... Maybe it was her little romp in the, the storage room with chains. Right. Now. <laughs> right. Girl. Yeah, I I mean, the way she's been talking... But my problem with this is that they already know who Adam is. You're not going to change this man. Adam is who Adams is. He's Victor 2.0. That's almost like trying to change Victor. You're not going to do it. No. Y'all sign up to work with this dude and you think, oh, just act, just do better, just change. You got to, it's like y'all talking to a brick wall. The dude walk around in black all the time. You think he's going to change? No. Not in a million years. No. Mm mm. He is his son. I think that's why Victoria really resents Adam because Adam is so much like her, his father. Mm-hmm. And she knows that he's not like Nicholas. She can get over on Nicholas because he has more of a, a softer side. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He, she ain't no. going to be able to pull that on, on Adam. No. He'll run over her. <laughs> <laughs> he will just outright gun it. <laughs> gas pedal to the metal and floor it and go. I know one thing in the comments section. There's a lot of people ready for uh for um Victoria to be dethroned. For sure. <laughs> they sick of that come. girl. It will. What'd you say? It'll come. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like she goes through her little round too when it comes to her dad, where mm. she's in charge one minute and then. A few months later, he's he didn't kick her out of the position for one reason or another. Yep. But it's just so funny to watch when they had these business conversations and Sharon and Nicholas is just sitting there like like you said, two bumps on a log while they hash it out. And it's like, why are you there? Why are you <laughs> there? You all three. Go to the what, <laughs> what you say? Got to the PTA. Man, listen, that, every time they sit on Victor's couch, they just eyeballs are shifting left to right as Adam and Victor go back and forth. Yeah, it's like those cat clocks in the old days in the 60s. <laughs> you know, the eyeballs, the cat tail would just go back and forth and tick tock and the guys now would go back left, right, left, right. Exactly, and then they got the nerve to want to kick Adam to the curb. You couldn't even handle that type of conversation with Victor. No. I mean, even when Victor told Adam and Sharon and and uh, Nicholas that, you know, I'm merging Newman Media, Adam would even can see through that. Like, yeah, okay, but what else is going on? You got something else up your sleeve, and they sitting up there looking like you. Well, of course he does. What's happening here? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the, ship, the ship is going down, and the water is knee deep, and Nick's going. What is happening? I feel wet feet. Like, I don't know. I, don't, I do not understand this. It makes no sense. Man, it's just, it's just it's just so funny. You know. Um, Did we cover everything? I think so. I think so. I think so. It was a lot of moving parts, like you said, um, Keish. I mean, both of you, I think both of you guys said that. A lot of moving parts this week with all this business dealings and stuff, you know. But I can't wait to see their faces when Victor tell them that Nikki's taking over SNA or Newman Media, I should say. That's going to be hilarious. But that you know what that's going to cause, though, right? More Revenge. Mm-hmm. By who? Adam. Of course. That's supposed to happen like next Thursday. So, I I feel like that's <laughs> I feel like that is all of Adam's storylines is revenge, 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 and it's like, can y'all find something new for him, please? Yeah, revenge, revenge, revenge. Give up a body part. Revenge, revenge, revenge. Save a life. Revenge, revenge, revenge. It's like I don't, <laughs> how does this happen? Make, I know I'm right there with you, Keisha. It makes no sense. You know what? Well, why don't they just fly Hope out to Genoa City and maybe she'll get a rump in the sack with Adam and she'll come back and tell both, well, not Thomas at least, but tell Liam to go kick rocks. <laughs> You know, uh-uh. she can't even tell Liam to go kick rocks where she is. She but I'm saying, do that. listen, I'm, I'm like, saying after dealing with, we gotta get there. 
<clears throat> we try to get that at least with Adam. Maybe they have some throwing up against the wall type of scenes like he had with Sharon, you know, and she, she'll come back and <laughs> nobody, Brooke wouldn't know what hit her. She'd be like, where can I get a bottle of that? So. Right. <laughs> I feel like Thomas gave her all that. What? I see. I, I, yeah, yeah. I definitely want. I'm, yeah. Wait a minute. Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So hold on one second. I'm gonna ask you, ladies, and anybody in the comment section want to answer this. Who do you think she would have a better time in bed with, Adam or Thomas? Thomas. What? Thomas. What? <laughs> Because they promised her that pressure has been a pressure yes. for her for so long. It's a gas and wait yeah. to bust. But I'm saying if both exactly. Thomas, if both Thomas, knowing the skills between the Thomas's skills and we've seen Adam's skills too, they're on the same same plane. You know, we know they're on two different shows, and Thomas have had more exposure. Mm -hmm. But if they was on the same plane, who would she have a better time in bed with? If so everything Thomas, being equal, go ahead. I still say Thomas, and I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say this because I, there's never been another. I feel like love scene that I have been like, wow, like they the chemistry between these two actors is insane. Like there has been between um, the Thomas and Hope scenes. Like yes, Adam has had some good love scenes with Sharon and you know whoever mm. but I feel like that with Thomas has like overrun overtaken any other love scene that I've witnessed okay so uh, I, I don't know <clears throat> and I, go ahead and I think because we know like everything that Hope and Thomas has gone through like the, the past several months of Hope fantasizing about him we know how much Thomas is in love with Hope. Like there was just to me, there is no comparison of, of any other any other matchup right now. Uh, Jay Money, we talking about Hope and and uh, either Thomas or Adam, not Audra. We talking about Hope. Go ahead. He was asking who we were talking about. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Well, it's a mixed bag because I got some Adams in here and I got some Thomases in here. You know? Oh, somebody said, Adam. I wonder if Adam could handle Stephanie. Oh, I think, oh, girl, yeah. that would be fire. That would be total. Yeah. I'm not mad. Anyway. <laughs> listen, girl, listen, you know, I, well, okay, let me ask you this. Who's most sultry? Okay. Audra or Steffi? I think Steffi is. Steffi. You think Steffi's more sultry than Audra? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because okay. Steffi is real. Audra is a facade. <laughs> you said she's being fake. Yeah, I, I do feel like I do feel like Audra <laughs> is. I don't know. I, I do feel like a lot of her scenes, she just feels it, it feels fake and not very genuine like even with kyle it just doesn't feel hollow. real yep. okay yes gotcha. that that's a very good way to describe it it feels very hollow with those two the uh <laughs> she said steffi the men say steffi in the house okay all right well it's a lot it's a few audras but it's a lot of steffies oh no it would be time i feel like audra is like constantly putting on act putting on yep. an act Totally. Yeah, I've well, never Jenna. Really seen her be real with anybody? Never. Jenna described it perfectly. Audra is a shell of a person. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, Bree said Thomas hands down. If it was between Hope and Adam, so uh, I guess because we've actually seen an actual um, episodes with those two, it's kind of hard to kind of slide Adam into that because we've seen how hot Hope and Thomas was. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so yeah, somebody he said Bree said case closed. <laughs> <laughs> she has you got that right, Bree. Bree has spoken and counted to three. Yeah, she said case closed and put a period at the end of it. <laughs> I love it. All right, y'all ready to move on to bold? Let's do it. Mm -hmm. 
okay let's do it all right so before we do that there is almost 120 of you guys in the chat i please hit that like button i know the mods that's in the comment section has been asking you to do so hit the like button if you guys are sitting back and join i know there's some ninja watchers who's not saying anything and they're just watching and that's okay too <laughs> so um go ahead and hit that like button also too if you are not subscribed hit the subscribe button there's spoilers early spoilers recaps cast updates all of that stuff also on the other platforms ig tiktok threads and x which was used to be twitter over there as well if you want to catch some you know some clips some pictures some fun stuff some stories reels all of that good stuff is over there as well so you can follow on other platforms too all right okie dokie and T, if I can just interject, thank you so much for doing all of this work to keep all of this, you know, first of all, starting this and, and yeah. running this and you and Keisha doing this for so long and then keeping all the um, posts going on all the other uh, social channels. That's It's a lot of work. Thank you. Listen, it takes a lot of structure and organization to do that. It does. I never walk the charts with organizational skills. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this type of stuff for a long time. So, you know, it just comes down to kind of organizing. But I appreciate you guys because you guys take out the time every week. You know, I know y'all have stuff to do from time to time. But y'all still come on over here and have a good time and... I appreciate you guys and on the podcast side and, and the YouTubers and my mods and all of that. So I appreciate you all as well. So yeah, hit that like button like Bree says in the chat. Okay, let us go over to the bold and the beautiful. Hold on one second. Okay, so for the bold and the beautiful... For the week of August 21st to August 25th. After talking with Brooke and Liam, Hope decides she lost her way and may have turned away from and and what? And may have to turn away from Thomas. Steffi asks Liam. Steffi asks if Liam wants Oh my god, hold on. My screen just jumped. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Okay, hold your, okay, let me start over. After talking with Brooke and Liam, Hope decides that she's lost and may have to turn away from Thomas. Steffi asks if Liam wants Hope back. Brooke convinces Hope she made a mistake, and Hope tells Thomas that she has to face what he did to her. Uh, after ending things with Thomas, Hope asks Liam to reunite, but he wants Steffi. Finn implores Steffi to come home. Liam admits he's not a one-woman man. Ridge wants Eric to stop designing and stick to pickleball. And what's the last one? Oh, Sheila wants Steffi out of the picture. And Eric vows to launch his new line even without Ridge. Let's start with the whole Eric and Ridge situation. What do y'all think about this new storyline? I mean, it's been a minute since Eric has had anything going on. I think his his last big storyline was the whole Quinn thing, right? Yeah, uh, the, the with Don that was last September, or uh, last yeah, so August, I, something like that. I mean, it's it's centered around it's centered around fashion, mm -hmm. which is refreshing because I mean, it's the past I don't know however many years has been more about people's love lives and and the drama that comes with that than it has been about the fashion so i'm i'm hoping that in some way maybe this brings on some type of i don't know com competitive streak between eric and ridge and they both are designing lines and maybe only one can be funded i don't i don't know I, I have a hard time feeling bad for Eric, though. Like, I know a lot of people feel bad for him because they feel like Ridge is kind of, like, crapping on him right now. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, I think <laughs> I think because of how much of a Logan fan Eric is, I just have a hard time, like, I don't know. I have a hard time feeling any sympathy for him. 
and also the way that he used to treat Stephanie when she was still alive when it came to that company I felt like he was always very dismissive of her and like the contribution that she gave to building Forrester so it's like any any kind of line that they come up with that is trying to I don't know garner some type of sympathy for Eric I just eh, it's just kind of like whatever for me <laughs> gotcha what you think Trish I thought, okay, first of all, when he was asking Ridge for help, I did think that it was kind of dismissive of Ridge that he didn't really take him seriously. But today, Eric lost his mind. I mean, that was ridiculous. Um, he's, not, he's not been coming into the office for a long time. And to now be upset that the office is being used by the person who literally got you your company back? What's wrong with you? What's happening? Like, I know there's going to wind up being something that's wrong, of course, but he was off the chain today, and I thought that was really way too much. Gotcha. I, the whole stapler thing is what really got me. I'm like, he fussing a over stapler. a stapler. Now, I mean, is there maybe sometimes people have sentiments about when they got their first this or when they started the company and they memorized like their first ten dollars that they ever made and they put it in a frame or something you know i've seen situations uh -huh. like that but i mean he made a big deal about that stapler and so you know uh ridge was like what is really going on here now ridge was interesting when he said you want me to retire i retire I go have a couple of beers and i'll go watch something he was saying and he was like, but I got to run a company. Steffi's, you know, the CEO, but she's not a designer. You know, and he said Thomas wasn't ready yet, which I don't know if I agree with that. As much as y'all had him do all that stuff in Rome with them dresses for Hope. But, you know, hey, maybe he doesn't do the, the couture stuff. Um... But he made a point to say, hey, you, this is the purpose of you grooming me to get to this point. So now you can sit back and relax. But for yep. whatever reason, yeah. Eric feel like he's being pushed to the side, to pushed out to the pasture. Now, there's a lot of folks yeah. that saying that could this be early signs of dementia? I don't know. I think this is part of the storyline that joshua hoffman was talking about at the fan event because he's going to be integral in creating that job with i mean creating that collaboration of the of that whole fashion line that eric wants to do where he's going to do it with rj so i don't know if this is a dementia storyline it could be because he's going to have a problem drawing and so um rj is going to show him how to design on the computer instead so you know maybe that's where they're going with the two of them grandfather and grandson collab to create a new you know design or fashion line or whatever i don't know so we have to see i don't know if i want to call it dementia as of yet though because that's what a lot of people are thinking what do y'all think yeah i don't i don't think I don't think that they're going to do a, do a dementia storyline either because if they go down that road, I mean, there's no cure for dementia. So right, they will have to stick to that for however many more years. Exactly. Um, he plans on still being on the show, which means he probably wouldn't be on screen a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I can see why people would think that, though, because of the whole the whole stapler thing that he was going on about mm -hmm. it, you know it sounds like somebody that is hyper focused maybe yeah now jenna says she think it might be parkinson's man i really hope not i mean i dealt with all that in reality for so many years i really don't i want to see like fashion and fun and yeah and i'm fun. hoping for that uh, <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know like you said this is an escape for me man i don't need that deep Right, and the other thing about Parkinson's and, like you said, Alzheimer's, there's like, well, I don't know. I know that they, it's treatable Parkinson's. I don't think there's a cure for it. Am I correct? There is a cure. Right, so you would pretty much write, write him into a corner by going that route. You know what I mean? 
So I don't know. I I don't know. So we'll I have to see. That, mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was I was gonna say I wish that instead of RJ um, helping Eric, that it was Thomas because maybe doing that would pull him out of the hope for the future line, which is what I really want to happen. That would be cool. Yep, that so would I, be cool. I suppose I got to give RJ something. Because he ain't, he ain't done nothing on this show but be in everybody's business. Right, when he came yeah, back to town. <laughs> right, he... Right, I mean, he was the main right. one talking about he don't want family drama. It's like you always in the middle of it. <laughs> Okay, so I mean, we gotta see what it's. I I would like for it to go to a direction where it's just more fashion, cause I missed that. The last big, well, we had the Rome thing, but it was only two yeah, dresses. That was a photo shoot. Yeah, was it was only two happened. dresses. Yeah, what was that? We yeah. had all the promises of all this grandeur, and boy, that was delusional. Did the did the writer strike start around that same time? I don't remember. I can't. I can't keep the day straight. Yeah, I mean, I think it's still going on. Somebody. Oh yeah, because Courtney Hope was on live. Was it yesterday? And I mean, man, she was getting grilled on live about Mark. <laughs> oh no! I saw that. I saw a few of the little questions pop up, asking if they were still dating or why they weren't dating anymore. Hey, listen, hey <laughs> Keisha, she was not going to answer that question. <laughs> Nobody's yeah, because I, I mean, <laughs> I was out there. I was listening because you know if I if I <laughs> if I heard it, I would have talked about. Listen, I, <laughs> listen. <laughs> if she had talked about it, I definitely would have did a video about it. You but it. <laughs> but um, anyway, she was saying that the writer strike was still going on as of when she did that live. What was it yesterday? So. I don't know when that strike is over or how much longer they're going to go. So, and I think they have, who was that? Was that bold? I think it's, is it bold or why not? No, Josh is doing the writing over there. They got two replacement writers right now. Only two writing for bold right now. That's crazy. I mean, so I guess they trying to put whatever they can together, you know. So, I'll volunteer. well, come on, go. Let we can I'll all write, tell I'll them. Write for you. <laughs> listen, I would do well. No, but I couldn't do it because I'm support. I do support the writers, so I wouldn't. I would never cross the picket line. Jen, hey Jenna, uh, no, she wouldn't answer the question. Jenna was saying, "Are they broken up? What did she say?" She wouldn't answer the question. Everybody, every two or three questions was about where's Mark? Are you still dating Mark? How's Mark doing? Are y'all together? She refused to answer those questions. So, we don't know. As as far as I know, of the, I see that dog that he always take care of. It's like it's the same dog that's in her house. So, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they are still dating. I don't know. I hope so. Because I think they're really cute together off screen. Yeah. So, I don't know. We have to wait and figure it out. Um, yeah, but anyway, going back to bold, you know, it's going to be interesting. I'm ready to see a fashion show like we saw in November, mm-hmm. you know, and not a hope fashion show. Let's get some, some ridge Something and different. right. Exactly. Cause hope didn't have what? Two or three fashion shows now. She's basically been the only line that they've, um, featured on this show for the past several years. Exactly. Yeah, because the best. I remember. Oh, go ahead. That went away. Yeah, there was at at one point. I think it was when the previous Thomas was on the show. Mm-hmm. He did a men's line. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, that they just stopped talking about that altogether, and now it's literally only been hope for the future. Yep. Well, hopefully we get the whole traditional couture line that. You know, he's talking about, and, you know, hopefully they won't make it a, you know, he got some certain type of condition situation. You know what I mean? I hope not. Yeah. yeah. You know. That's the other reason they need to bring Sally back. Like, 
her family is a staple on Bold and the Beautiful. Exactly. That Spectra line is, was part of the history of this show. Yeah. And now it's just completely gone. And she and don't I, even I have a so job over there. What'd you say? I said in, in General City, she don't even have a job. No, right. I know. Well, you know, okay, so, all right, so what if, okay, what if on Y&R, Chloe and Summer and Sally somehow wind up bonding while um, while Chelsea's out, and then they become tight because Sally's had a loss, Summer's had a loss, maybe they commiserate, make up, whatever. Um, and then what if Sally joins Marchetti and has the spectral line under Marchetti and then goes back to a bowl? Well, I can tell you that's not going to happen. Okay, I tried, y'all. I tried. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> because she going to right, gonna go right over to Nicholas and ask for money next week to start her new venture. So. Oh, I'm okay with that. Yeah, so whatever that is, or whatever her own design business, she, after all, because Nicholas offered her money, what, last fall, Keisha? Oh, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, and she turned it down. Now you come back a year later and say, okay, give me some money. Well, after what her, his dad just did, I wouldn't be bashful about asking for something. Somebody better make up something right now, man. She... <laughs> Been over every pass. I need some comeuppance about this. Man, she needed. <laughs> she, you know what? She needed to just take her butt back to L.A. I don't know why. Know. They, you she know knows. what? And Keisha, you were finishing saying something about the spectral line. Oh no, I was just saying I, I miss the competitions that they used to have between Forrester and Spectra and the little fashion show runway offs or whatever they used to call it. I, I don't know. I just miss that aspect of the show. Yeah, me too. Wasn't it funny when Steffi shoved her off the pier? <laughs> oh my god. You know, they used to have some crazy storylines back then. Man, that was hilarious. I mean, even when they had the competition when... Who was that? That was Bill... Bill so, messed it up. Well, it was a competition about who was the best designer or something. Was that them? Yeah. Oh, is he still on the Stella Mars? Probably. I would be. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's been back. <laughs> Girl, he ain't been back since the day, uh, that since Liam got dropped off in Rome. Well, he did come right. back for yeah, a little bit. Well, with, with the Sheila thing. When, oh, wait. Yeah, because he was in court. That's right. Right. But then he disappeared again. Yeah. <clears throat> I seen a video with Don Diamond and his wife doing a skit. So he's busy yeah, at home so with his family. Cute. And I think he's about to be a grandpa too. Or, oh, I saw that. Yeah. yeah. That is a beautiful family. They're fun to they're mm -hmm. fun to share their Instagram and watch that. That's, they're just fun. Yeah, shoot. He's like, Y'all not giving me no screen time. I'm finna enjoy myself. Heck yeah. Dude, I don't blame him. He got all those. He got what seven sons, something like that. Is that that many kids? Yeah, yeah. seven. I didn't realize that. Oh yeah, he got a lot of boys. Yes, he do. And they're all athletic and just so handsome. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so now let's talk about this Sheila Deacon thing because that was only oh. a little bit. <laughs> We have oh, <laughs> she go dang! What's wrong, Trish? I'm exasperated from Sheila Garner. <laughs> oh my goodness! Listen, she was sitting up there. Whatever they did, I don't know if if Sheila got her back blown out or did she blow blow Deacon's back out because he yeah. was like he was Deacon, like Deacon was the one looked like he was hurting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my god. That was hilarious because Deacon was like, whatever that was right there, I ain't never did that before. And I'm like, well, what did y'all do? <laughs> Don't say it. We'll get banned. Right. I ain't going to say Listen, I can't say what it was, but whatever it was, it blew Deacon's mind. Right. Man, that was hilarious. But, um... She actually, I don't know, because it's playing into some some spoilers that came out. Because we heard Sheila say um, 
that Steffi need to, yeah, the Steffi need to get out of the, we need to get Steffi out the way or something like that. And I'm like, oh, Lord. She's insane. She tried to play it off like she was just. Joking, um, hypothetical. Yeah. Girl, nine toes, Sheila. I was just going to say, was she joking? Nine toes. Nine toes. <laughs> You know what? If she just sit tight like she been doing, we ain't seen her for two weeks up until what today? Yesterday? Didn't need to see her today. Oh Lord, leave Kimberly Brown alone. I like Kimberly Brown. She's hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's not Kimberly. <laughs> Kimberly's. I'm just trying to figure out um, when everybody's going to find out Deacon and Sheila have been right. banging for the past. Well, six they get months. unexpected visitors next week, oh, so. so frustrating. So, yeah, they're going to get busted by, uh, well, I don't know if they're going to get busted, but they're going to get visitors by Ridge and Carter. And now my question is, why is Carter coming over there? Only thing I can think of, and kind of like what Soap, uh, Belinda over at Soap Dirt said, is the fact that maybe Carter might be trying to do restraining orders or something. And, um, maybe that's what it is where, um... You know, they they want Deacon to stay away from Sheila. I don't know how that's going to happen if she putting it on him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how, what, wait a minute. How are they going to put a restraining order on Sheila for her to stay away from Deacon if Deacon isn't the one asking for the restraining order? They're probably going to try to talk him into it. Saying, hey, you know, we need to keep the family safe and, you know, hope and, you know, how they try to loop everybody into stuff. We'll see, but, yeah, Carter. She ain't even thinking about hope. (laughs) She ain't thinking about hope, girl, please. Hope doesn't mean anything to Sheila. Well, when it comes to Brooke and all the rest of them, even, he, she, look, Sheila ain't even thinking about Liam. Liam is thinking about Sheila. I'm going to protect Steffi from, like, she ain't thinking about you. Waffle boy, <laughs> little puke. Little little puke, waffle boy, waffle Liam. Junior. Waffle Junior. Waffle Junior. <laughs> hey, it is so funny. I keep thinking about what um, Bree always called Ridge pine cone poppy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is so well, let's funny. Let's talk about food now. I want some waffles with some syrup and blueberries. Yo, girl. <laughs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> girl, all the names. Lame old waffle boy, little puke, twerp, Liam. It's yeah. a, that man got so many names. Okay. I have, to, I, have to, I have to fess up to something. Go ahead. So, I mean, obviously this is all fake and, and everything, but I will tell you there's posters online that call Steffi Stuffy S-T-U-F-F-Y and every time I see it I'm just like oh god okay (laughs) um Keisha what am I 12 you're so funny (laughs) Keisha you need to go get Jay money he in, in the com- you, what are you in there doing, Jay? He said, I think the back door was unlocked, if you know what I mean, with Sheila and Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know there was a scene in an old Charles Destin movie where that, what I'm suspecting happened. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Y'all are crazy. Jay Money, uh, Jay Money crazy. is so funny. Just slightly educated. <laughs> like, only because it's not in the movie. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> oh my God. Oh Lord. Jay, you are a mess. He a hot mess. I tell you, boy. Anyway, yeah. So I don't know whatever this danger that Steffi is going to be in in the upcoming weeks more than likely has something to do with Sheila, especially since what she said today, which was she need to be out of the way. And I'm like, oh, come on. Yep. But, I mean, Jacqueline still has to go on maternity leave. I wonder if her best bet is just to take off to international or something. Right. Take, That's take, what I assumed was going to happen. I, I, I thought maybe her and Finn would leave the country together for a little bit. I would hope that they do. Me too. I don't want it to be some kind of medical emergency again. I've had enough hospital scenes. Right. Don't put the girl in a coma for six weeks because she's pregnant. I don't need to see... 
life right. in order. Nothing like that right now. Exactly. You know, it's like, why are we doing that? I mean, just send the girl off like, look, let's go over to International. We, Because with her being a criminal, I'm not saying that she won't uh, disobey rules, but she's a criminal. She can't leave the country. Right. So mm -hmm. send Steph and, and Finn over to, I don't know, Monaco or Rome or wherever and let her stay over there. Jacqueline had a baby and come on back. That'll leave Liam in a tizzy. Yep. Yep. Because he thinking that he's making headway with, with her. And you know what? I got to apologize to Keisha. And you know why I got to apologize to Keisha? Because you were, I was saying that Steffi was conflicted. And you was like, no, she's not. <laughs> so I, I agree with you after seeing today. Maybe she's not conflicted. <laughs> I'm see. I mean, okay. Trish, I was actually saying this girl won't Liam. She just playing around. She ain't setting boundaries. And Keisha was like, just hold on. No, she's not, conf yeah. Yeah, she uh, not conflicted. Definitely agree with you, Keisha. She, I don't think she's conflicted. Yeah. Now I don't know how long it's going to last. Yeah, in this moment. In, the, in this moment right now, I feel like she's not. I just don't know how long they're going to allow that to last. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially considering... So this is what this is what um I feel like it there has to be something more that's going to happen for them to have Liam completely walk away from hope. Mm -hmm. Um, he did it, and he did it without knowing whether or not things are going to work out for him when it comes to Steffi. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Like I, I feel like either whatever is going to happen with Steffi with the whole she's in danger thing. Mm -hmm. Um whether or not maybe that ends up breaking up her and Finn and then that's how Liam, you know, snakes his way into her life again. I hope not. Oh. I hope not either. But, like, what are they going to do? I mean, they had Thomas single for, I don't know, what has it been, four years now since he's been on this show. So, I mean, I guess they could put Liam in that same category. Why it's been single forever. Mm -hmm. Or... So we think because we haven't seen Flo. Girl, now you so, I, know. Mean, I, I guess they could make him single, but I just don't see that happening with him because they've never done that with Liam on this show. Girl, you know Liam is Ridge 2.0. Right. Yeah. He got to have a woman somewhere. And unfortunately, yeah. I hope they don't go that route. However, Bree calls Steffi stuck on stupid. So... <laughs> So I guess uh, Brie might not quite agree. Oh yeah, here we go. I disagree, Keisha. She's still keeping those kisses to herself and coming down in her lingerie in her granddaddy's house. Nope, Steffi is pulling a brook. Nah, I don't agree. <laughs> 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 <clears throat> pulling, a, pulling a brook, she would have been in Liam's lap by now, honey. Right. Mm -mm. She did drop that robe. Dang, Ron. Now, if the, Go ahead. if the spoilers are correct, though, um, or I don't know if these are really spoil spoilers or if they're rumors. I don't. I don't what, know what, what, what you I hear. Stuff online. What'd you hear? So, one of the things I heard was that Liam is, I guess, him and Hope are going to reunite at some point. And, or I can't remember if you, maybe you were the one that sent this to me that they were going to reunite and he was going to demand that that was fake. Thomas be fired. That was fake. Was that fake? Yes. Oh, okay. Me and um, that came out before all this happened. And so um, me and um, Jay was talking about that. What was it yesterday? Uh, I was like, eh, now, yeah, mm mm. Nope. That's why I, I'm glad you said rumor. <laughs> Because I yeah. might have to do some research. But go ahead. No, it was just that that was just the point I was going to make. Like, I don't know if that was a rumor or if that was a for real yeah. spoiler. But. Yeah, so. All right. So now. But, we, I mean, the other ahead. spoiler or rumor is that Steffi is going back home to Finn. Now, that I did we see. Just, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Last. Yeah, I saw that come. That's sometime later next week, which is 
if she goes back home, that's probably when Sheila's going to probably pop up. And that's that whole danger spoiler. Which, yeah. that makes it bad because now, it re and, and I'm sick of Liam talking trash about Finn. He's not that good of this person. What did he say today? How he put it? <clears throat> oh, um. The not so good doctor or something. Something like that he said. Throwing yeah. shade. Y'all act like he's some yeah. evil person that just stole your wallet or something. It's like, no. Yeah. Not like he went and threw Beth in the ocean and held her under. I mean, right. uh, well, sorry, um, yeah. Kelly, and held her under. And that's how they're, yeah, that's how he's acting, is, is as if he went out to the ocean with Kelly and just left her there. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like he just, he went from, obviously Liam is jealous. Because why are you saying that? He, uh, I guess he's not so much of a goody two shoe, or good this, or good that. And I'm like, it's not so perfect after all. Exactly. You know? And you know what I've noticed? You know what I've noticed with Finn is that every time that he talks about when he's talking to Steffi about their family, mm -hmm. he always includes Kelly. Yes, he does. He yes, he does. Hayes. He always says Kelly and Hayes. Yep. Liam, on the other hand, when he's talking about his family with Hope, he only talks about Beth. Yep. He doesn't mention Douglas, or it's rare that he mentions Douglas, and he rarely mentions Kelly's name. Yep. When she when he's talking to Steffi, he only talks about Kelly. Yep. Right. He doesn't mention Beth. It's like, are you incapable of just talking about both of your children and caring about both of your children equally? Yeah, he lives in a silo. He does. Like, even, even at Beth's birthday party, um, when him and Hope were getting ready to take the, the gifts up to the cabin, he only acknowledged Beth when he was leaving. Like, I get that it's her birthday party, but you're leaving the house. Why right. are you not also acknowledging your other daughter, telling her, I'll see you later, or, you know what I mean? Right. Like, that is some, it's, it's weird. like the little details in the writing mm -hmm. when it comes to him. I don't know if they're purposely doing that or if they just are not thinking about that, but... It's, it's very noticeable. Exactly. Exactly. And that even goes back to when he was in jail asking Thomas to take care of Hope and Beth. Didn't mention a word about Kelly. Thomas was the one that had to bring Kelly up. Yep. Right? Like, you're also her father. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. He got this tunnel vision when he on, depending on what side he's on. It's just crazy to me. Yeah. Now, Crockpot Queen says, "Why can't Finn just stay at Eric's house?" I don't. I don't understand. I mean, why couldn't he? That's what he said. He was I, like, "I can move. I'll move in here." I exactly. was cracking up when he said it too. I'm like, people just inviting themselves to Eric's house. They do. Yeah. Girl, listen. And maybe that's what's wrong with Eric because he can't be alone with Donna. There's too much. <laughs> Listen, his office and his house is Grand Central Station. Oh, wait a minute. Been invaded. Wait a minute. Somebody used a hotel <laughs> reference. Was that you? Which one of y'all used a hotel reference when I talked to y'all? Um, somebody called. I don't think it was me. It Maybe was, it was Bree. Wait a minute. Somebody referenced it. A uh, reference Eric's house as um, not like a hotel. Oh. Somebody called, uh, call it the GCAC. That was Bree. That was Bree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think she called it. I think that was last week. She called it the GCAC. Yeah. She called. Yeah. She did. You're right. <laughs> she called Eric's house the GCAC because everybody come live there. Ridge, Thomas, right. Steffi, everybody lives there. So, all right. Let's keep it moving. Now we got to attack this situation with Brooke and, oh my the God. Okay, let's, earth. huh? What did you say? The worst mother on earth. Oh, I can't believe she had that girl go back to him. Why would you mm -hmm. do that? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I don't get it either. I don't get it. That and, woman, mm -hmm. even before uh, the all the drama that they created with, um, Matt Atkinson's Thomas. She has not wanted hope of Thomas. Nope. Even before they labeled him unstable, she never wanted hope. But she always wanted him, her with Liam for obvious reasons. Because of course, 
she's always seen this as a competition. But it's like, you are so obsessed with this man. Yep. Why are you so obsessed with your daughter being with him when you clearly see how miserable she is? Yep. I totally agree. Yeah. She That's said. Cool. You know. <laughs> Go you ahead. hate your daughter? Like. Oh my god. ID said uh, instead of it being the house of pancakes, it's the house of wafflers. But go ahead. <laughs> it's it's just like she she knows how Liam feels about Steffi because Rich told her. Mm -hmm. And yet you still are trying to pressure or convince your daughter to go back to, to him. Makes no sense. And it, it just makes so and then they gaslit the hell out of them both of them that's why i called it when i did my recap earlier this week i think it was monday or tuesday both liam and uh brooke gaslit the hell out of that girl yeah they did they sure i mean did. she was by the time they got through with her she felt like she was crazy yeah she was qu questioning her um her sanity her her sanity yeah, like something's wrong with you. You aren't yourself. I mean, I've seen you better than this. You aren't who you think you are. You were horrible when you were that other person. I don't know you. And she you looking lost like your way. Exactly. You lost your way. <coughs> Liam was Yeah, the that's where I'm confused. I'm like, what does that mean? Exactly. What does it mean that she lost her way? Because she has feelings for another man? As like Liam has feelings for another woman. Like right. Brooke has gone back and forth between men throughout her life. She's lost her well, way because of they, that. They just expect her. I mean, she's supposed to be Little Miss Virtue with no real feelings and no real emotions. She's just supposed to be happy that she has a line and a wonderful husband like Liam who treats her so kindly and, and her little family. <laughs> and she's supposed to be like a Stepford wife. And now she's broke the mold and she has evidently experienced things that she has never experienced before in her words um so yeah good for her go girl you remember y'all remember the wednesday episode of the july 10th week when it was called the awakening yeah <laughs> yeah you know i mean she realized at this point that she finally found a man who loved only her was only concerned about her who was not going to hurt her there's no divided hearts or anything like that plus yep. they share a son together and she lost her way now i do know that there's a lot of lope fans and i understand that y'all ain't y'all don't like thomas because they still keep going back to that whole thing with that mm -hmm. with baby beth and i don't know how many times i gotta say he kept the secret was that right no but the perpetrators right. were felon flow and zoe and dr buckingham and if y'all can forgive flow meaning the logans did and zoe gets a lead model position at forrester after all of that at some point when y'all gonna let give grace to thomas come on now Exactly. I mean, Liam just totally got amnesia about 2021 where his whole freedom could have been taken away if it wasn't for Thomas. Exactly. So, I mean, and now this should solidify it. I, I can't see. I, there are some fans that still want, you know, Liam and Hope back together. But after what he said to her. <laughs> The gaslighting, she go break up with Thomas and then come back. And that picture that's on the screen right now where he's walking out the door and she look like a frail little something. You see that picture? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ain't no way that, that she should be left looking like that after all of this. If y'all want her yeah. to be with that dude. <clears throat> okay, so the way that he left her wasn't as bad. But it borders on the same treatment that he gave Steffi when he left her in a heap on the front deck on her knees. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, yeah. That was bad. That's what he did. Yeah, I felt like that was worse. That was worse. Oh, that was definitely worse. But that's what Liam does. That's who Liam is. A condescending, unforgiving, I'm going to do whatever I want, but I'm going to judge you for everything that you do, little man. So let me ask you ladies this. When he originally had the conversation, 
did it sound like he wanted to get back with Hope or did Hope just make that up in her head or did that come from Brooke adding to it? Brooke. I think Brooke added to it. However, I think there were some words that he said that maybe yeah, could have been a little misleading for Hope, but he never said he never said to her, I want to try again. I want to try to work this out. Um, I think Hope was reading into like how he was, I don't know, I guess how he was acting that day because they were giving each other little smiles during best party. Then when they were up in the cabin, you know, they were having friendly conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he said something about how our little family is great. Um, there were like a couple other words that he said that kind of like I don't know, kind of felt like you know this is this is nice. It's nice being here with you like this. Um, he told her, you know, I still love you. Didn't say I'm still in love with you. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. I think I think Hope probably just read into it. Um, because she wants him to forgive her and she wants to try again and instead of just in that moment saying you know what does this mean and then him saying and then him let him letting her know that he didn't file the divorce papers was another thing um so i could i could understand why she read into it the way she did why maybe she thought that there could have been um a chance for them to work things out but i I, if I were Hope, I would have just straight up asked that question instead of just assuming that this is where it was leading to. Because he never said, if you do this, if you stop, you know, whatever you're doing with Thomas, then maybe we can work it out. He never said that. And she didn't actually ask him to get back together. She asked him if there was hope and if he forgave her. And I think the two could be hand in hand but i think they could also be separate i think she definitely wants forgiveness but i think the only reason she even broached the topic is because both of them got in her head what he Mm -hmm. said and some of it was absolutely misleading and um what brooke did i think was completely and totally manipulative of her daughter and in complete bad faith as a mother to her daughter because she knows for a fact that Liam told Ridge that leaving Steffi was the worst thing he did. Yeah, that's the other part that gets me. Who does, does she know that? Who, Who does Brooke? she know that? Did Ridge well, tell she... me that part? Yes. I thought all Ridge said was Liam still loves Steffi. I didn't think that he told her Liam said that marrying hope or leaving Steffi was the worst mistake of his life. I didn't I didn't think he said that to Brooke. Maybe I'm thinking of that because that's what Liam told Wyatt. Yeah, well, he, said even, he said that to Wyatt and he said it to Ridge, but I don't think Ridge said those exact words to Brooke. I think he only told Brooke in his okay. conversation with Liam that Liam still loves Steffi. Okay, okay. But and even, that's even bad enough. Though, that's what I was right. going to say. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what exactly I was going to say. If, if you know Ridge is telling her you know what even that part of it why would you send your daughter back into that girl because we know Brooke don't care we know she don't she she hears those words and in her head she's thinking to herself well yeah maybe you know maybe he does love Steffi they have a kid together you know he's always loved Steffi that's not a big deal he still loves you too Steffi's married she's not you know she's not a threat you don't need to worry about her Take, go, go beg for your husband to take you back. It's okay. Well, all I know... He loved you before. He can do it again. Like that. Yeah. Brooke is a, she's an idiot when it comes to relationships. Well, all I know she's is just, that, Ri- that Liam laid the foundation and Brooke came behind him and put the icing on the cake. Because he... I agree with that. He put the whole story out there about how could you be with somebody that did this with our daughter and took our child away from us. And, you know, and I I expect better from you. I thought you were better than that. You're better than him. And, you know, I'm like, and then here come Brooke behind him in the same episode. You need to fix your marriage. You don't need to be with Thomas. You need to go tell him that you don't want to be with him. You need to fix your marriage. Get back with Liam. And she's sitting up there, and and then, of course, she added on talking about how Hope lost her way. 
And then the next yeah. thing you know, yeah. which go ahead. Yeah. And the next thing no, no, you know, no, it brings us to this subject when she goes over to talk to Thomas. Thomas was ready to throw down, and they gave the. <laughs> they gave. <laughs> ready to throw down. Yeah, because, I mean, dude had the house with candles. He had a whole yeah. romantic setting going, and girl, he knew girlfriend was coming over there, and they gave yeah. the indication that they had been sleeping together for the past several weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, go ahead. Go I ahead, just have to say, mm -hmm. everything that Brooke has just done is exactly what Stephanie Forrester used to do. That's it. Nope. There you go. Sum it up. Yep. But, um... The minute... Go ahead, okay. Keish. Sorry. I was just going to say, the minute Hope said Liam didn't file those divorce papers, Brooke's eyes lit up. Like a Christmas tree. Yep. She was like, see... See, he didn't file the papers. There's still hope. There has to be a reason why he didn't file those papers. Well, why are you waiting for him to file them? Couldn't she just go and put them in the... They both signed them. Any one of the two of them could have went. Why Neither one of them went. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying, Keith? Yeah, yep. I, no, I agree. You know, but that whole... Kind and I, I still don't... Oh, sorry. That whole conversation over at Thomas's house... She running behind the couch as if Thomas was about to come and stick her with a fork. <laughs> and I'm like, girl, why are you spaz? And she ran behind the couch freaking out. I'm like, what? What is this? Did y'all see that? Yes. Oh, my God. That yeah. was crazy to me. But go ahead, Keisha. I mean, it was kind of like what she did the first time she went to his place. After Liam walked out on her. She, how she was walking, like, pacing back and forth in his living room, like, crying and um, questioning, like, herself because of what she did in Rome, mm -hmm. kissing Thomas. It was kind of the same. She was having kind of the same reaction to to that. And it's, it's almost like... So, I think <laughs> that's part of the reason why a lot of the viewers mm -hmm. were like... Um, there must be something wrong with Hope. Look how she's acting. Like, she, she can't even form words, and she's pacing back and forth. It's like she's losing her mind, so that's why she's so into Thomas right now, because she's not in her right mind. Like, that's what, that's what Lope um, fans, that's what the Lope fans are, are saying. Well, that that's how they're excusing her behavior right now, is they think that she's had some type of mental break. But the thing is, is that when you've been gaslit like those two did to her, that's what you, that's mm -hmm. where that's coming from. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't see Thomas do anything but support her. Right. Right. And then when you see her in scenes with her mom or with Liam, they're questioning her sanity. Exactly. You must be crazy and to be with Thomas. Super, yeah. Super condescending towards her. Now, I, I will say in her conversation with Brooke, Brooke did say something that made sense because she was like, uh, that was what Hope admitted to, um, what did she say? It, it had something to do with her using the excuse of, um, Oh, justifying. Liam, justifying what she did because, uh, basically deflecting to Liam mm -hmm. about his feelings for Steffi. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I do think that, that I was just trying to justify my behavior instead of just owning up to it. Right. Because I think Brooke, I can't remember if Brooke asked her, like, how she feels about um, Steffi and Liam's dynamic or something like that. Mm -hmm. When she started to say, you know, maybe there's still a chance. And she was like, I think I was just using that to justify my behavior. Yes, and yes. then in her conversation with Liam, um, Liam owned up to to his mess, and he was like, "You know what? You weren't you told you weren't totally wrong about my feelings for Stephanie." Mm hmm. J and that was when he said, "I'm I'm not a one woman man." <laughs> exactly. Jay Money said Thomas was about to put that Keith sweat on. Who can love you like me? <laughs> he said, "Who can love you like me? Nobody." <laughs> oh my God, Jay oh, is hilarious. And then, um, 
Bree, thanks for the super chat. She says, Thomas was making that girl run in that bedroom too. He must have gave her a reason in 12 hours to run behind that couch. Mm, that's a good point. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, she had to have a couch between her and Thomas because I'm telling you, if they've been tearing up. Listen, ex exactly. Listen, if, if they've been tearing up them sheets for the last month, Come on now. My thing right. is, how you gonna go back to Liam? To <laughs> no. How you gonna go back to Liam? My thing is, obviously, after that, after that <laughs> exactly, you didn't get your back blown out. He didn't put you to sleep a couple of times, and then mm -hmm. you gonna turn around and go back to Liam, little puke boy Liam. When he, which wasn't gonna work anyway, because Liam doesn't know that they slept together. Right. Um, and that's, we, we all know that the cheating secrets don't say don't stay a secret. Not when it goes to the extent of what they've done. <laughs> that was definitely going to come out. Yep. Oh my God, Jay is him and his songs. He said Thomas was about to be on. There's a meeting in my bedroom. <laughs> Oh man! Listen, are you gonna pull out the whole list of uh, uh, record titles, J Money? Come on now. But um, I I just hate that if they have been, you know, doing the do in the bedroom for the last four weeks, we didn't get to see anything since July. We got ripped right. off. We got ripped off, right. writers. Man, come on now. Shoot, we could have got at least one or two a week up to this point. Right? <laughs> I mean, you know, everybody else has been in the office. Exactly. Everybody can else. I, can I just say. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say everybody else has been using Eric's desk. Yeah. Hmm? Right. <laughs> my conference room table's nice and long. Oh, my God. Go ahead. Can I say how annoyed I was when um, Thomas and Riz were talking in the office and then in walks RJ. And instead of Riz saying, hey, can you give us a minute? He tells RJ, oh, we're just talking about Thomas's relationship with Hope. Oh, right. my Why God. Are you including RJ in this conversation? Exactly. I couldn't believe it. Did you see Why that? was that necessary? Oh, my God. Go ahead, Trish. <laughs> I mean, I just, I'm with Keisha. It's like, did you see Thomas's face? It was like, wow, you just blew my cover. You just, you just sold me out, man. Yeah, that ain't RJ's business. Mm -mm. Exactly. I mean, what you gonna do? You gonna tell Pammy too? I right. mean, seriously. You to put out a company memo. All right. Uh, Hope and Thomas <laughs> are having a relationship. Okay, mm -hmm. whatever. It's like. Yeah, he's like, I'm just concerned about my sister. Like, RJ, shut up. Right. Yeah, you got another sister too. Are you concerned about her too? Right. Yeah, why don't you go cuss Liam out for being in Steffi's face all day long? Exactly. I mean, Finn did sick you on him, remember? Right. But, um, going back. That's why, that's why I say uh, RJ has one sibling, and that's um, Hope on the show right now. I, I feel like he doesn't consider Thomas and um, Steffi his brother and sister because he doesn't act like it. He does not. Mm mm. Mm mm. Nope. Um. Now it was interesting that uh, Thomas did a selfless act by saying, "Hey, you know what? It's only one thing I can do. I'm just gonna step out and let you go back to your husband." I mean, he didn't really have a choice. Well, I'm glad he didn't go over there and try to. You know, act crazy or something because it it really the writers are really allowing him to be selfless at this point, which is a good look on mm -hmm. his part. Agreed. And, and you know what's gonna wipe that all away hmm. is if those rumors or spoilers or whatever they are, if those are true, that he's gonna go over to Liam's office and talk to him about taking hope hope back, and then going to hope and telling hope that he wants to be with her because he knows now that Liam doesn't want to be with her. Yeah, like, well, that's going to wipe all that away because what I don't want to see is Thomas chasing hope now and asking her or begging her to be in a relationship with him. Like, I need you to just take a seat somewhere, Thomas. Um, 
let her figure herself out. Mm-hmm. You figure yourself out. And just let things play out the way they're going to play out. But don't go beg her for a chance to be together. Um, Jen- like, I'm so tired of seeing him beg for her love. Yeah, Jenna said, I don't want Thomas to be a doormat. And that's exactly what he is with her. He's a freaking doormat with her. Yeah. Oh, I just, I just want you to be happy. I just want to do what makes you happy. All I care about is your happiness. You're the best person on on earth. Like, it, it just it pisses me off so much that they let him have that dialogue when it comes to her. Like, a a a Keisha has some self respect. <laughs> Are they turning him into a simp? Thomas has been a simp when it comes to her. Yeah, mm-hmm. he has been that. <laughs> well, Dang Dewan said it himself. He said he'll be a simp. <laughs> He, he has been a simp since he's been on this show when it, when it has come to hope. Well, I will tell you this much that what you just read is true. He's going to go over there, confront Liam, telling him to take him back. When, when Liam says no, he's going to call Liam a fool, walk out, run back and tell, tell her. And then she going to tell him, well, let's just try and take it slow one day at a time. If I was him, I'd be like, especially I wish he had heard what Hope was saying to Liam at the cabin. All that part, well, you know, I did lose my way and I don't know what I was thinking and I wasn't myself. Exactly. Thomas should have heard all of that. Yeah, exactly. And Thomas would be like, oh, really? You've been telling me you chose me all this time. Right. So, I, I agree with you, uh, Keish. Don't, I don't want him to, and Jenna, he, don't be a doormat. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, it's time for Hope to, uh, not necessarily beg Thomas, but I feel like if this is going to work for them, it can't be one-sided. And it's been one-sided for forever. Mm-hmm. It's always Thomas is the one putting in the effort. Like, they need to show Hope putting in some effort for Thomas. Right. I agree. And that's why I would. I, I want him to just step away from her clothing line. I want him to not necessarily cut her off, but set boundaries with her. Like, you know how I feel about you. We can't just be these casual friends working together. Like, there aren't these feelings okay. there. Hold on one second. All right, Lorraine, tell um tell her I said thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed the show and see you next time. This um young lady, she has someone uh sit up and listen to the recaps. I think it's an older woman, I think. And so she was listening to the live. So Oh cool. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much. I appreciate you and uh yeah, continue to enjoy, you know, the uh recaps as well. I appreciate it. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, Keish, but I just she wanted to pop out, so. Oh no, you're fine. Yeah, I'm just like we're. I'm pretty sure most of the Thomas fans or all of the Thomas fans are tired of seeing Thomas mm-hmm. being drug around by his nose when it comes to hope. Yeah, that whole thing next week is absolutely ridiculous because, like you say, why why are you going up there pushing? You trying to prove something. Because, I mean, why would right. Thomas do that unless you're trying to prove something? Yeah, I just, I want him to stay out of it. Just stay out of it. He, there's it's no reason, necessary. there's no reason for him to go confront Liam about not taking her back. Not at all. <laughs> you are the last person that needs to be in that man's office talking about how stupid he is. Like, Hope, as annoying as as Liam is, mm. Hope was the one that made the mistake in this situation. And mm. yes, Liam has been forgiven for all of his mistakes in the past, but mm. it's his prerogative to forgive her or not. And if he's saying, I can't do that, because I know you have these feelings for Thomas, it was more than just a kiss for you. Like, there's feelings there. Mm-hmm. And if he can't forgive that, then that's his choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Brooke telling him that they need to get back together and RJ and Wyatt and anybody else or even Thomas coming in there telling him he's stupid for not forgiving her. Like, that's that's on him. That's up to him to do. And you, the person that she cheated with, should not be in his office trying to tell him that he's stupid. When you know that she cheated on him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. 
did you all catch that whole tiff that happened between Ridge and Brooke? Because Ridge, I mean, Brooke came to that office all smiles and cheerful as if, you know, Hope and Liam was going to get back together. And Ridge was like, I don't know about that one. <laughs> And they got into a whole argument about it. And I'm like, Brooke, yo, he, come on now. He tried to tell you a couple of weeks ago what was going on with that man. Right. Was was that the scene where she said something about she just wished Thomas would have respected her marriage? And he was exactly. Like, respect her marriage. Exactly. <laughs> and that, that was funny. That was funny. That was like, a, Thomas isn't the married one in this situation. Your daughter is. And she clearly does not respect her marriage right now. He did not. And I'm glad Ridge came with the clap back. Yeah, me too. Me too. You know. It needs to be a little more forceful and louder, but mm-hmm. I am glad that he said it. Me you too. know, I mean, seriously, she was the one fantasizing about him. She was the one that kissed him in Rome. She was the one that showed up at his house. She was the one that took off her ring. And she uh-huh. was the one that dragged Thomas up them stairs. Exactly. He did it. And that, that was the other thing he said. Rich said to uh, Brooke, "Was she made the she made the trip over there? Did he say trip? I feel like he used another word because I remember laughing after he said it. Mm-hmm. She made the journey. That's what he said. She <laughs> made the journey to Thomas's house. So she wanted she went over there for that reason. Mm-hmm. Thomas didn't drag her over there. No. Thomas didn't go over to the cabin. She went to Thomas. Right." <laughs> Because remember, um, when that first came out, the first thing Brooke thought was he manipulated you. It was like, no, 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 no. Not this time, Brooke. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Get over yourself. And my thing is, if she, I ain't going to even go there. But you need to leave your daughter alone. You know, she probably ain't had this type of loving in a very long, if ever. Never did. She said it herself. Exactly. Mm. You know, I mean, I don't know if Matt Atkins, we said this before a month ago. I'm like, shoot, Brittany? <laughs> His girlfriend. <laughs> Brittany, you know, you're a lucky woman, girl. Right. Because the man was biting, biting and scratching. <laughs> no, she was biting and scratching. Well, he was biting, too. And them kisses, he was biting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, every yeah, time right. he tried to, he even did it when they was in the office, he tried to bite her. <laughs> you know, I, I, shoot, girl, mm-mm. I ain't never seen Liam do none of that. No, mm-mm. not at all. Not at all, so. Liam puckers up. <laughs> Oh my God, Trish! You know how disappointing though it is to see Hope go from what she what she kind of discovered in herself during Thope Week and the week after, oh my God. back to that weak woman that she was before. I feel bad calling her weak, but the, the the woman that allows her mom to tell her what to do, that allows other people to get in her head. And change her mind about something that she feels in her heart that she really wants to do. It's like she went from that confident, mm-hmm. it girl, um, feeling free and all of that stuff, back to cage. being trying to be, yeah, that that little, like you said, caged, um, meek. I'm gonna do what my mother says, kind of person. It, like, well, everything that she said just, I feel like, just went out of the window. Don't you think it also goes back to her um, insecurities of how she even came to be in this world and that she's, you know, always said, I'm not my mom. This doesn't make her her mom. Um, you know, but she, in her mind, she's got all of these psychoses that she's worked up for years and she is going against all of that. She hasn't lost her way. She wasn't lost. She specifically carved the path. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I think she's probably just when they're coming at her like that, she's starting to question herself. And so she's doing like turtles. They withdraw, you know, they go into the shell and she's gone into the shell. And I can't wait for her to bust out of it again. Oh, well, Thomas yeah. needs to bust her out of it. Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, the writers need to keep, quit playing tiddlywinks with this couple. Skip Brooke. Brooke need to get over herself. She didn't have an, a plethora of... We had a whole... Was that her 35th anniversary or something? I forgot what it was. When she had all of her men's is standing in front of her in her living room. Everybody from Nick Maroney to Deacon to Ridge, Bill. Uh, I'm not saying that Hope got to do all that. They brought a clown car to deliver all those guys. What'd you say? <laughs> they brought a clown car to deliver all those guys. <laughs> Oh my God! Coming, coming, coming! They're coming out of the trunk, out of the back seat, out of the front seat. I mean, she—it's not like she's well. She, okay, she been with Wyatt, she been with Liam, and that's it, right? And Oliver. That's oh, it, yeah, right? The boy. F- I don't think her and Oliver ever slept together, though, did they? Brooke ruined that. Brooke ruined that one. Oh yeah. So technically, and then she had a boyfriend when she was in Europe. Well, we never got to see him, right? Yeah, we never saw that person. Okay, so basically in L.A. it's just been Wyatt and Liam. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, Liam has stepped out 15, 11 times, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, that includes the girls that ain't even on the show anymore, like Ivy and, 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 um, what's her face over, uh, Sally. Sally. Yeah, I mean, and he's y'all still kept letting the dude come back. And now all of a sudden, you had a little twist. And I'm not saying it's good to cheat on your spouse. So, did we talk right. soap world out here. So, I don't want to get it twisted. But my thing is, is that he got a lot of nerve. Okay? Let that girl be. Brooke got a lot of nerve. Let that girl be. She going to figure it out. And I would rather for her to be with somebody who loves only her than a man specifically telling you he's not a one-woman man. That's the first mistake. Listen, I gotta give it. I gotta give props to uh to 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 Liam on this part. He Mm -hmm. was honest. Yep. He didn't say he didn't tell all of it. He told about seventy percent of it because he didn't tell about (laughs) some kisses. But he said, I ain't a one-woman man. I just got to keep it honest with you. Keep it a buck with you. Yeah. So, I mean, Hope, and you still, she going to still be conflicted over that next, that dude next week. That's the crazy part of it. Yeah. Even if, because she still wants Thomas, she also still wants Liam. So, they're going to have her conflicted over a man who just told you, I don't want to forgive you. I don't want to be with you, and I'm not a one woman. I'm a one. I'm not a one woman man. How much info do and, you need? Right. Yeah, and that's where I'm confused. Like, how are you? Where is the confliction at? This man doesn't want you. It makes her look so, pathetic. Yeah. So what are you? Are you still trying to to earn his trust so he forgives you? Like, what are you doing? Right. What's going on? Only here? thing I can and think. And that was. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say, and that was one of the, which I guess she admitted to this week that maybe she was deflecting, but she was preaching for, I don't know what has been in soap world, I don't know, maybe a week, couple of weeks, mm-hmm. that that was why they broke up was because of his feelings for, exactly. one, of, one of the main reasons they broke up was because of his feelings for Steffi. But now you're basically still trying to, Beg this man to take you back. Maybe. So then, it, so then it wasn't that bad after all. And I think that was another thing that he asked her in that conversation was, um, if it was really Steffi, then were you unhappy all these years? Where he said, he said these all these years without incident. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I was totally committed to you. Yeah. <laughs> That was crazy. <laughs> Which is a valid question. It like, is. Have you been feeling this this whole time, or is, did this just come up for you? Like, because you I was such I mean? a good boy. <laughs> right. Mm-mm. And if you're so if you're so positive about these feelings that I have for Steffi, then why are you still willing to try to work things out now when? These feelings are probably not going to go away. Ooh-wee. <laughs> I mean, that's a good point. 
I mean, listen, you didn't use that as justification all this time, and then all of a sudden your mama talk cuckoo-ness up in your head, and, and then you want to turn around and be like, oh, okay, I need to be back with you. I don't care if you still want to be with Steffi. Are you crazy? And then the crazy thing is Brooke actually is not is going to be shocked that Liam don't want to take her back and then want her to continue to fight for her marriage. It's like, are you stupid or are you stupid? Right. She's stupid. Yeah. She's stupid, ain't she stupid? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yes and yes. Yep. I mean, it just, it just looks deplorable. If my, listen, my kid come and tell me that the person that they with said that they not a one, one woman or one man this or that or whatever because I have a son and a daughter. They come back and say that the person that they with is not a one person anything. And that they got divided feelings for somebody else. I'd be like, uh, uh-uh. uh, you need to Where's get you need to get far away from that as possible. Absolutely. I'm not gonna sit there. Cause, I, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, I just want somebody on that show to address that with Brooke. Yeah. Like, why? Why do you go so hard for Liam, knowing how your daughter feels, knowing how he has made your daughter feel, knowing that. He is in love with another woman mm-hmm. and then share the information with her that Liam has basically told three people on this show so far that marrying Hope was a mistake. Yeah, that's and bad. And I think even if she knew that, even if she knew that piece of information, I think Brooke would still try to get Hope to fight for her marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. But it's like, I, I really want somebody to do a deep dive into Brooke's mind to figure out why she's so obsessed with Liam. Yeah, why is that? That's weird to me. Why do you want her, you want your daughter with that man so bad? And my other question, where is Tay-Tay? I, I mean, we had her for one day last week, and she ain't been, on the 15th, and she ain't been back since. It's yeah. like, bring the, bring Taylor back. Where is she at for, for Thomas, for Steffi? She came back one day to argue with Ridge, and then she disappeared again. That sucks. It does. So, anywho, did we cover everything? I think so. All right, cool, cool. It was a lot on both shows. I mean, all of the moving parts and business over at the Young and the Restless, and then this whole thing with Liam and and Hope bouncing back and forth, and all this so kind of stuff. It's ugh, it's crazy. Can I just be petty for a second? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Please. So I, I, it's obvious. I've, I've never liked Hope. I've never, I've never liked that character. I've always felt like she was very self righteous and very high and mighty, little trying to be little Miss Perfect. So there was a little bit of, and I think I said this to you already, um, Letitia. Mm-hmm. There was a little bit of satisfaction in hearing Liam call her a mistake because for years Steffi has been the oh she was a second choice Liam didn't really want her he only went to her when he was mad at Hope um Hope is his true love and his first love and blah 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 and it's like I don't know I'd rather my favorite be the the second choice than a mistake (laughs) oh man it has been just a little bit satisfying for me to see this play out the way it is, just because the Hope character has always annoyed me. Yeah, that whole thing. I mean, he couldn't have put it no plainer with that girl. I mean, sheesh. It's like, what do you what do you do with that butt walk away? And you tried to kiss that man, and he pulled away. Did you see that? When he kissed her on the forehead, she tried to kiss him. Yep. And he like yeet. <laughs> <laughs> he was like you thought, girl, that was hilarious. I was like, oh no, he didn't. And she and and the way that Annika posed that with her arms looking all frail yeah. in her face. She was- done. She was done. Yeah. Annika did a good job with that after she effect. Did. She sure did. Because he just left her standing there looking like, ooh, 
Nope, you thought. Yeah, that yep. was crazy. All right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and move on to our final two um, uh, segments. So, we're done with bold. If First of all, it's been riding close to 125 people in this chat. Make sure you hit that like button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed. And also hit the notification bell. I appreciate it. All right, so our flip the script segment is if there's a particular scene or storyline that you wish you could change, this is where we flip the script. So who wants to go first for the young and the restless? Go ahead, Keisha. Ooh, do I have a flip the script for young and the restless? Um, I don't think I have one. You don't have one? I don't know why, but I didn't think about one this week or today. What you got, Trish? Uh, so I guess my flip the script would be um, I I want, I wish, okay, when Nate came in with the rose, mm -hmm. I, I wish Victoria would have done like a play the game with him, like pluck the pedal off and make a statement about something that he's done or hidden or whatever. Oh, that, that would have like been a, good. That would have been a really, really intense <laughs> scene. Yeah, it would have. Um, so that, I would have flipped that script to have that go in a completely different direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. You thought of anything, uh, Keish? Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got nothing? Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> um, my flip the script would have been um Heather telling Lily, uh, "Why are you at? Why are you asking me all these questions and what you're saying? Are you insecure? You know, I mean that whole conversation didn't yeah. have to happen. She was being shady by putting saying all this stuff about her and Daniel and what they've been doing and stuff. It's like, girl, please, but you going somewhere?" Y'all good? Yeah. Then fine. Y'all good. All right. What you got for bold? I, guess I would tell. Oh, um, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, the the scene with Ashley and Victoria. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Instead of instead of Victoria entertaining that convers or not Victoria instead of Ashley entertaining that conversation, um, with Victoria, she would have told her to mind her business. Oh yeah. Her brother is no longer her concern. It don't, it don't matter if they got kids or not. He's no longer your concern. Mind your business. Yep, I got you. Okay. What you got for bold? Um, For bold, it would have been that scene where Brooke, RJ, and Ridge were all in the office. And once again, talking about Liam and Hope possibly getting back together. I would have liked, I would have liked for Ridge to have told Brooke exactly what Liam said to him about how he doesn't know how he ever left Steffi and he felt like marrying Hope was a mistake um, just to see what their reactions would have been and that he has actively been in Steffi's face trying to win her over because I don't think Brooke knows that either mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah she don't mm -hmm. okay what you got Trish well I wish whenever um Brooke started gaslighting Hope. I wish Hope would have just stopped her and put her in her place and told her that I don't have to take this from you. Of all people, how could you do this or think that you have a right to say these things to me? And I wish she just would have left and not that, that whole. That was just that was ridiculous. Yeah, um, my f uh, my flip the script would have been um the whole situation between ridge and brooke kind of like what keisha was saying look why would you, i would have been if i was rich i'd be like why would you want to have you know what i told you of what this man been doing why would you have your daughter get involved with somebody that have feelings for my daughter why would you even want that i would and and, and honestly Ridge should be also not having step. Well, we know Steffi's not interested, but he should be telling Liam off too. Yeah. You know, but I. Telling Liam off. Ridge. 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 Yeah. 
Yeah, Riz should be telling Liam off. How you gonna let that dude, you ask him how you feel about my daughter. And he tells you and you walk out the office like, okay. It's like, right. really? So now that you have this information and Brooke is trying to force her daughter to get back with him. I'll be like, why are you doing that? Don't do, don't tell that girl to do that. That man crazy. He, right. He's a waffler, just like me. <laughs> Um, okay. Waffle Senior. Waffle Senior, exactly. Um, we got some flips in there. Jay Money said, flip the script next week. Thomas telling Liam, you see, that's why I had to blow Hopes back out for 12 hours because you a damn fool. <laughs> Lord, Jay. I He's do... trying to have Thomas be a menace. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because that'll blow his. You think, well, I wonder what Liam's reaction would be once he finds that out. Oh, Lord. That would be a hot mess. Um, let's see. ID says, bold and beautiful flip. All of this is a dream. Steffi is still in a coma from Finn last year before they were reunited. They fix all this crazy, messy writing. Yeah, they need to fix all that. Except the Thomas and Hope part. We can keep that. Um, Bree says, for Y&R, Ashley throws a drink in Victoria's face and tells her not to be so patched. And get a man who actually wants her. Oh. Okay, Bree. Um. Short and sassy. Uh, says, flip the script. Eric kicks all of them out of his office and his house. <laughs> uh, Vinny says, Sally tell everyone she's going back to Los Angeles is a flip. All right, and then Rashad says, flip the script, Hope moves out. Mm, yeah, if Hope do need to get off of Brooke's cabin so she can stay out of that girl's she business. Go. Girl, get her. She, uh, she girl, won't she, with Eric, too. The girl, listen, <laughs> either she move in with Thomas or go get her own little, little place. She got money. She ain't broke. I don't want her to move in with Thomas. No? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Not yet. Okay. I, need her, I need her to work for Thomas. I heard I that. Do that but. Um, Bree yeah. says after Liam tells Hope he won't forgive her. Hope tells him, "No worries, Thomas. Will will a bad decision tonight? Like he was other what? I think something's a typo there, Bree. No worries, Thomas. Will a bad decision tonight? Like he was the other nights I was with him. Okay, and I'm, I'm hoping that she." Give me an update on that because that probably would have been good. Vinny says, have Sheila do more than what she's doing? Okay. Well, she just popped back on screen, what, today? Because we hadn't seen her for two weeks. So, all right. And then who's taking seats this week on The Young and the Restless? Victoria. <laughs> okay. Nate Nadra. <laughs> Okay, um, and then I will say, um, I, okay, I'll just say Sharon and Nick, because they don't know how to conduct business, they too, mm -mm. they need to let Adam handle that, but, you know, uh, they have to take a seat for me, and then what do you got for Bold? Um, Brooke. And Brooke can take a seat. RJ. <laughs> Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Yes. Oh, okay. gosh. Man, um, I don't, I don't know what's wrong with Eric yet, but I'll give him a seat just for today, for that stapler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I don't know yet what's going. I mean, besides what I know for next week, but you know, hopefully it ain't nothing major. But for today, I'm gonna be like Eric. You know, just come over and sit down for a second. We We're gonna get you a new stapler. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's old and it doesn't work anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no one else can take a seat. Who? Oh. Whoever's writing the script for um, uh, the Steffi and Finn scenes because they have been saying the same thing to each other for the past two weeks now. Oh, yeah. We didn't even talk about that either. Huh? We didn't even talk about that either. We didn't? 
No, that reuniting of them or professing they love or whatever and they kiss today for we ain't seen that type of interaction with them in a while. Yeah, they kissed last week. It just wasn't all that great. Like like today. Yeah. Gotcha. But I feel like they they're literally talking in circles. Yeah, like, they're saying the same mm -hmm. I want you to come home and she's saying I just I don't think you me, I'm working on Sheila. Yes, I can protect you and the kids. I miss my wife. I miss you too, but I'm worried. It's like they're saying the same 10 words to each other. <laughs> yeah, they keep recycling the same conversation. Yeah. Um, ID said, Lorraine, ID, La flip, fire the writers. Oh, okay. She said, fire the writers and good night. Had to leave a final message. Okay, good night. Good night. <laughs> good night. Um, okay, some seats. Um, LaShanta said, Nate and Victor and Audra. Rashad said, Victoria, Nate, Audra, Nick, Sally, Nikki, and Victor. Victor should take a seat with what he did to Sally. Um yeah. Dewan said Victoria. Lashanta said Brooke Hope. RJ have a seat. Dewan says on B&B, RJ and Eric. Rashad said RJ, Liam, Hope, and Steffi. And then David Hall said RJ's haircut is another topic. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, oh, you know what else we didn't really talk about? Who? Was, was that Thomas's breaking up with him? How she took some accountability for her role in basically initiating that their intimacy. Yeah, that's true. Well, we we definitely saw her drag him up them stairs. So yeah, Thomas was like, "I didn't ask for that. You you basically you, came to me. you right exactly." Exactly. J Money said, ladies, do you think the secret of the kisses between Steffi and Liam and the sex between Thomas and Hope will be revealed? They need to figure out a way to let it out. I think I think it will. And I think I think with the kisses, I think Finn is just gonna he's gonna blame Liam and he's not going to be he's gonna feel like Liam took advantage of a situation. And I don't think he's gonna be all that upset with Stephanie. And that the I think depending on what happens with Thomas and Hope. Mm-hmm sex will come out or it won't. I think if they put Thomas and Hope back together like in the next couple of weeks, it won't matter because Thomas and Hope are together at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think if she's still doing that whole I'm conflicted thing and still trying to like rub up against Liam, trying to get him to forgive her or, you know, save her marriage or whatever it is that she might be trying to do, um, I think it will end up coming out because that will basically put a nail in that coffin them gotcha okay cool um short and sassy said take a seat why not victor nate audra sally and billy because he's playing the middle between jack and ashley and take a seat for bold liam brooke staffy hope and ridge for how he mistreating his daddy um delmonica said brooke liam and rj take a seats on a cruise to nowhere Rashad said, have Thomas and Finn jump Liam. <laughs> I, I thought about that one. Them two need to come after Liam. I said that to somebody. I forgot who it was. Then the victim. Don't want that. Oh, yeah. Liam would play the victim, wouldn't he? Of course. Added Thomas and Finn. Yeah. They would be saying, like, his mama and Thomas is back to his old ways. Exactly. That's true. Um, Bree says, after Liam tells Hope he won't forgive her, Hope tells Liam, oh, okay, I think I said that one. Oh, she rewrote it. Okay, so, after Liam tells Hope he won't forgive her, Hope tells Liam, no worries, I'll be in Thomas's sheets tonight like I've been the other nights too, and I'll send you the tape. <laughs> Dang. All right, Bree. Jenna says, Nikki, Victor, Nate, and Audra. Um, LaShanta says she's sick of Finn begging. Me too. Yeah, so Je am I. Jenna says RJ, 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 Brooke, 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 and Liam, Liam, Liam. She had to emphasize it. 
Uh, Eric's house and just be like, get your, get your, I almost said a, a cuss word. No, she, it just, <laughs> <laughs> girl, you silly. Um, Bree said, take a seat, Sharon. She was stupid for selling the company to Victor. Her IQ is equivalent to coffee beans at this point. Ooh. Bree be, do- Bree be going in, don't she? Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. She said, my mother-in-law at 81 is more invested in these soaps. 35 years. Can we deal with Liam for 35 years? I can't do another week. Irene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know, right? Um, I think that's all. Oh yeah, Bree said, "Take a seat." Lame old lakes and world tour. They both were pitiful gaslighting hope this year, this week. And take a seat, Audra. Will my H of A? Okay, mm, Medora. <laughs> Uh, okay, so that's all of them. All right, and so who's your star of the week? Uh, Young and the Restless. Young and the Restless. Dang. I don't know if there's really anybody that stood out. Maybe, um, uh, what's the actress that plays Summer? Allison Lanier? Yeah, yeah maybe she did do a good job. Yeah, just the little the little scene of her having a little breakdown and confronting Kyle about getting a divorce. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what you got for your star of the week, uh, Trish? Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean for Y and R, I'll just say Arya. Oh, the baby girl. <laughs> I didn't see her, but yeah, I can't think of an outstanding scene from. Any of the adults. <laughs> I'm just going to give it to Adam just because I like him. And he was cutting up this week. He was smarter at the business table than his compadre. So. And then, um, what about the bold? Um, I'll say Annika for bold. Yeah. Um, okay. The scene that she had with Thomas, breaking it off with him. And then scene with Liam, mm-hmm. her reaction to him. Okay. Basically, yeah, definitely, most definitely hope. Yeah, I, I gotta give. Been. I'm gonna give it to both. I'm gonna give it to Brooke and all three, because I mean they did very well jobs of gaslighting that girl, and then of course Annika responded in in tow. I mean they acted that out to a T. As bad as the situation was with what Liam and Brooke was doing, the way that they did it, it was like wow. Yeah. So I, I would I'm from Scott Clifton in there too. Yeah. That forehead kiss on was like shit. Okay. Yeah, that was cold. That was cold blooded. That's you kiss your, your niece on the forehead. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know that's, that's a good act. Exactly, it sure is. With her permission, of course. What'd you say? With her permission, of course. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, we got some Adams in the comments. We got some uh, Connor, Summer, Eric, and who else? Thomas, Hope, Liam finally got a backbone, and Thomas. Okay. All right, you guys, that is it. We had a good one this week, and stay tuned. If, if you haven't checked out the early spoilers, I did those. Bold and Beautiful I did this morning. Young and the Restless I did yesterday, so they're already up. And then the full spoilers usually come out on Sunday because the promos are attached to them. So I usually, I know a lot of folks put their spoilers out like Friday and Saturday. And that's cool, you know, to each his own. But I like to attach the promos to kind of get another look into what actually is going on next week. So you guys can get a visual. So um, stay tuned for that. And then also the the daily recaps. And then we're going to do this again next week, Friday night. All right. All right. 
You got anything else, ladies? Enjoy the weekend, you guys. Yeah, enjoy your weekend. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Bye. Bye.